Is this thing on? Is it on? Hey everybody, it's Joe from Joe's Computer Museum. How you doing this evening? Um, I want to thank everybody for stopping by. Who has stopped? Well, we got Retro Tech and Jamie's Hack Shack, Dave's Vintage Apple Tech, and Jack 68K, and Thomas Armstrong, and Garth Beagle, and Everything's Broken Garage, and Bill Goats, and probably some other people that I haven't noted from the comments, but hello and welcome. Um, it is a wonderful Saturday evening. I'm bored off my rocker. I've got some extra time for once. It's a magical, magical thing. Um, I have my blue scuzzies mostly caught up so I can work on those Sunday. So I'm going to do some, some backlog of some fun stuff tonight. And for me, fun stuff is designing circuit boards for the awesome Apple three computer, because, um, it is April two, you know, it's our, our Apple two thing, uh, uh, this year, uh, in April and, uh, the Apple three is kind of like a pseudo Apple two, sort of, it's like a weird Apple two. So we're, we include the Apple three in the Apple two in the Apple two, um, pa panacea, so to speak. Um, in addition, this year's Kansas fest, if you don't know about Kansas fest, go to kansasfest.org. It's the yearly Apple, uh, Apple two festival in Rockhurst at Rockhurst university. Um, Kansas Fest this year is all about the Apple III. That's our focus this year. Uh, so I figured, well, I'm doing a lot of stuff with the Apple III, uh, trying to preserve it and get it to where people can, I don't know, use the gosh darn thing, uh, something or other. Um, and uh, I figured I would do some work uh, about the Apple III this year and maybe have something to show off, present, have for sale, have for giveaway, I don't know, for, for Kansas Fest, which I'm going to this year. If you're going to Kansas Fest this year, look for me. Uh, I'm the weird nerd with the glasses. I'm another weird nerd with the glasses. Um, so yeah, uh, Jack68K, love that t-shirt. Thank you. This was a gift from one of the people uh, on the, I think it was Joe McWilliams, I think is the name. One of the, uh, one of the members of the Apple II Enthusiast Facebook group. Um, he made a shirt for himself and then he, or he, his wife has a cricket, um, and or, uh, silk screening machine or something. He made one for himself and then he made some extras and he just kind of handed them out to people. So I just randomly got it in the mail. It's like, here you go. Yay. So since it's Apple two day, Apple two month, Ap April three day, whatever, I decided to wear that. Um, Retro Techie, can you include my Apple clone also? Yes, Apple clones, Apple II clones are acceptable as part of the April 2 thing. So no problem there. The colors on that shirt, they are super vibrant. It's like, hi, do you want to see how red this is? It's like hyper red. It's like more red than this thing. And that thing emits light. Um, so yeah. So that is what we, we are we are doing tonight. Again, a little uh, shopkeeping or a little uh, housekeeping uh, stuff. Uh, again, Joe, Joe's Computer Museum. Um, the reason I'm able to have this entire th pile of cool stuff back here is because of awesome people like you who support my shenaniganry. shenaniganry. Um, you can go to all of these little linky doodles down here to uh, find a way to uh, support me. You can go to jcm-1.com and pick up things like blue scuzzies and eventually the thing we're working on tonight um, and other cool stuff uh, for your Apple IIs, your Apple threes, and your Macintoshes. Um, you can also uh, go to Patreon, uh, to Joe's Computer Museum uh, on Patreon, and uh, uh, do basically a supporting donation uh, to the museum. Um, and that gets you cool stuff like, you know, you can get mugs or stickers or T-shirts or even for as little as a dollar, you get access to my Discord where uh, you get to uh, talk to me directly whenever you like. Um and also you get invite links to streams like this. So if you're one of my, my one of my Patreon users or my patrons on my Discord, I threw this link in the Discord so you can come join me on the stream if you like. Joe, did it hurt when you fell from Apple to heaven? Yes. Um, I hit my head and I was never the same. Um, so yeah, so that's our that's our our our, our BS uh, self-promotion stuff for the night. So Let's get into what I'm doing. So let's talk about the Apple III a little bit. Um, the Apple III is a weird machine. Um, insofar as it is notorious for its 
unreliability. Um, how can I put it? It the the very the very first version of the Apple Apple III uh, with the twelve volt RAM board was unreliable for a couple of reasons. One, the heat um, is a very cramped case with notoriously Steve Jobs didn't want a fan in it. He didn't want it to make noise. Um, it was manufactured using an untested uh, uh, manufacturing or a, a new manufacturing process. Um, it used 12 volt RAM chips were, which were prone to failure. It used um, lots of higher voltage uh, S series or not higher voltage, but higher current using S series logic chips instead of the, the lower power or lower current LS series chips. Just lots of little things like that. And so the basic, the, the thing was basically an oven and it would cook itself on the inside. And that led to the whole idea of drop it, drop, drop it six inches, lift it up and let go. And it would like reseat the chips back into the sockets because they would, they would uh, work their way out and all this other wackiness. Um, but they, they came up with uh, further revisions of the uh, Apple three. And then also the, the, uh, fix, which was the Apple III Plus, which was a completely redesigned board, they fixed all those problems. So by the time you got to the Apple III Plus, the Apple III Plus was actually a quite a powerful computer. It was the most powerful um, Apple II-like computer that you could get. The thing was crazy. It had it had um, digital audio capabilities. It had multiple screen resolutions, 16 colors, color text that the Apple II didn't have. Lots of cool features, built-in built-in uh, serial ports, built-in uh, uh, high-performance floppy interface, all of that cool stuff. But were you supposed to drop it six inches while it was warmed up or cold? I don't, I don't know. Both, sure, why not? Uh, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, it was. A, hey, Ron. Um, hey. Welcome to the stream, buddy. I went to Garth Beagle's barber. Never again. <laughs> never again. It was ninety dollars. For moose alone. For moose alone. Did I know? Ridiculous. It looks like they made your hair grow. They did. Actually, it's um, it's really weird because the place where he gets his hair trimmed is in lawn and garden at Lowe's. So they <laughs> they go in there and they they run you a time or two under the um, the riding lawnmower, and then they they do some edging on the sides. They get a little, you know. And then, uh, and then they just park you in front of a leaf blower for about twenty five minutes. <laughs> so it's got a real. This is why I do my hair at home. I know it's got a real Muppets Tonight sort of feel to it. <laughs> that might be an esoteric joke. I don't know. It's, uh, <laughs> no, I get it. <laughs> Joe, your audience was born. I, I, I went somewhere today, and somebody was like, "Oh my gosh!" I went to Best Buy, as a matter of fact. That's like my second home. They were like, "Hey," I'm like, "Oh my gosh, you have the same birthday I do," and I was like, "Oh, really? That's amazing!" And she goes, "Yeah, but it's 1998," <laughs> and I was like, "That's cool." I um, I've been working at my my current job longer than you've been alive. <laughs> Thank you for making me feel old. Yeah, yeah. I was like, this is either going to be a hell of a Yelp review or it's going to my type five. I don't know which. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I got the same thing. But like uh, at work, we get these these new um, these new employees. And I'm like, when did you when did you graduate high school or college in like 2004? I'm like, yeah. I know it's it's weird how time just keeps <laughs> moving along. These young people. Which way does time go again? I know. I, know. I remind them all the time because they're like, oh, I didn't know. And I said, it doesn't matter. I said, um, just keep earning. Just keep earning. But like at a high level and keep paying your social security because I'm going to need that. <laughs> that Daddy going to need that third leg on the stool. Thanks. <laughs> so what are you working on tonight, Ron? Oh, my gosh. Other than uh, getting an appointment with my regular people that do my hair. Um, I actually, I've got this beautiful battery here from Drake Ooh. in Canada. This is a, um, aftermarket power book battery. Oh yeah. Make yourself big. I mean, that's fine. I mean, it's make, make me smaller. I mean, I'm just telling you about something. Gosh. <laughs> it's like, what stream am I on Dave's? 
I'm joking. <laughs> but no, it's uh aftermarket uh power brick battery. Um cool. it got a little melty over here on the corner, I think, just with um because when he was putting things together, but I mean it still works. Um but anyway, yeah, I, I now have a aftermarket PowerBook one hundred awesome. series battery. Yeah, I know. Um, Drake uh, has got all the stuff to do the little because um, you need the the high impedance like to like mm -hmm. solder that stuff together or like weld that stuff together actually. And so he has all that and has been doing it for a while. And Drake's in Canada, um, so if you are a Canadian person, of course you can always buy your blue scuzzy from Joe. But if you're like I want one that has potentially um, been assembled in the dining area of a Tim Hortons. <laughs> then maybe give Drake a shot. They're like, but, I don't know. You can't bring those hot implements in here. Anymore. Oh, yeah. You guys in here with your stuff. It's uh, I'm just saying, if you don't clean this up, I'll ask seven, maybe eight more times before I'm going to have to call the police. And then give them free coffee because I'm too embarrassed to throw you out. <laughs> yes, that. Mm -hmm. So, but he he made these really nice little batteries, but he sent me one as a test because we wanted to see if, if it would sneak across the border. Now, now keep in mind, these are just nickel metal hydride batteries. They're not, they're not lithium. There's nothing fancy going on inside this little box but i did want to open it before i actually stuck it in something because it did it it arrived at shipping but it's making it is making a Rattling little rattle it. and mm -hmm. I, I just don't know if it's just settling and like all the electrons slid to one side <laughs> yeah which often does happen it's just you science. need to defragment the battery that's probably it interleave the one the uh i'm gonna run positive speed, negative charges i'm gonna run speed disc on it real fast <laughs> Maybe I'm going to run Mim Maker as well. You never know. Yeah. Batteries get memory. You run Mim Maker on them. Really yes. optimize that auto exec dot terminals. Dot bat. Oh. Ha ha! Battery joke. Anyway. Nice. Cool. Um, <clears throat> Everything is broken garage. Ryan, who is like Canada adjacent, says, Ron, why does your Canadian accent sound like nice Midwesterners? It's because secretly we have been infected with Canada niceness for a long time. It is, it is, it is in our DNA. Shh, don't tell him it's, we're it's stealing. weird. It's so weird. So when I went to New Jersey, not to make this the Ron show, but shit, step aside. Um, Keep talking, man. When, when I went to New Jersey recently, I had several people come up to me and they're like, Ron, we watch your channel and we watch you on this other stuff, but it's like, you're so nice. Like, where, where are you from? I'm like, oh yeah, I'm from the Midwest. And, I, and they're like, well, you don't really have like an accent. And I'm like, I don't think there really is. I was like, I think once you get to like the Mississippi, like mm -hmm. everything west of that is sort of like a very generic sort of that Midwest, Midwest accent. And mm -hmm. they were like, you're just, you're so nice. You're not going to make it out here. <laughs> I'm like I said it's cool I'm going home in a couple of days <laughs> so, but it was but it was very nice I had uh, Steve and Allison as a buffer against all of the uh, the people in New Jersey that just pass on the right just all the time it doesn't matter I mean I, I saw somebody I saw a hearse sideswipe a school bus while I was out there <laughs> I just I'm not Ow! I'm not saying that Why? they're I'm not saying they're aggressive drivers, but shit fire. <laughs> That's insanity. Yeah, that I did. Um, actually, crazy. there are times when I, I get upset about stuff. Garth says, um, I have seen Ron mad. And I don't know if I'm really mad. I get I get like just sort of like I'm at the end of my rope with whatever this thing is. So I've got to I got to just, you know, I got to get out whatever it is. And then. Um, and then I feel better about it. Mm -hmm. so like i got mad at javier about something one time and i i just i had to send him like six apology messages and then like six months later yeah i, I was i was still um i still felt bad about it so i sent him another one i was like hey man just as a cherry on top oh no i screwed up oh, i love it this is a great look i'm looking to do a thing stand by 
Are you adding your video capture? Oh, there's your Elgato. Hey, did you uh, did you get an Elgato face cam? No. Hmm. Ah. Well, I was just ah. looking at what it was labeled. Oh, free no, cam. Just call, I like, called it that. Oh, face That's cam. Just, okay. I just call it face cam because it's. I mean, it's I mean, if their lawyers reach out, just whatever. But still. <laughs> I don't think they're going to win that argument. Mm. <laughs> it's been Joe, called face cam for a million years. Yeah, Joe, you should um, you should just have your camera and then just share your screen. So you're over here by me. But then I can't you, like you're very you're very hard to poke. Buttons. You're very hard to poke. It's you're not allowed to when poke. you're on the other screen. Present share screen, share screen. Sure, great. Sure, sure. Right screen, screen two. Sure. Yeah, do it. Like that? What well, is this format? I? That's not that's not what I'm saying. You what you do is come back to two and then and then add your screen as a presentation. See? Yeah, beauty beautiful. That's Be stupid. I love beautiful. it. Beautiful. Anyway. Look, look. Poke and Joe. Poke, 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 poke. Ow. Poke. Ow. It hurts. <laughs> So anyway, it's, it's tickling now. Ah. <laughs> We're designing an Apple three uh, memory board tonight. Mm -hmm. And by designing, I'm really just I'm, I've gotten the uh, schematic part done. I'm going to go over it real quick again. And then actually get into the KiCad side here and actually start laying out the board. Um, but basically, the memory board right here. Uh, from a, the Apple threes are they're, they're awful. They use these 4164 chips that are hard to find that fail too often and all that stuff. So I'm designing this with new static RAM. So, mm -hmm. and basically just to run through the circuit real quick, this is all the stuff that determines part of the address, uh, the uh, memory address to talk to. And this deterrent mm -hmm. right here determines the other part of the memory address to talk to. And then uh, these are the actual memories here and then this is all the weird stuff that has to happen because the apple 3 has this funky dual memory bus right i think i described this prior but basically mm -hmm. the apple 3 can here let's go to this other ah i mean that's great i mean yeah i mean let, let's just i mean this is what happens inside an apple 3 yes it's just it's just chaos it's, it's a tiny chaos. it's a tiny joe next to yes. a idc 19 connection yeah you know it <laughs> um but now this is you know this is the basic apple 3 uh memory layout and it's got this this weird double data bus the uh right. it's got the i'm calling them warm and cool colors but Ron mm -hmm. can't see those so i can um, tell that there's a difference so i'm gonna say i don't have my my stuff with me but I'm going to say, like, it's red and green and blue and maybe yellow or orange. You are correct, sir. It's mm. it's orangey. So, yep, you're good. I do I do some color correction on my monitors now. I figured out. Oh, it you helps? Can, yeah, you can do that. Yeah. Cool. And it, That's it, it awesome. helps, like, a tiny bit. But anybody else looks at it, there's like, Wah. What is Wah. this weird? Yeah. yeah. That's the face. This is the... And I didn't mean to, mean, mean to call you out either. I just wanted No, to... it's okay. It's all right. I'm, I'm trying to be um, uh, understanding. Um mm -hmm. I mean, so I anyways, point out people's so, disabilities all the time. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fun disability. So. Run! Uh, anyway, so no, um, what we got is, is, is it's got these two data buses. It's got it or output buses. It's got this one and this one. It's technically has this third data bus here. Mm -hmm. So when data is going into the memory like this, mm -hmm. like this, yeah, it comes from over here. But when it's coming out of the memory, it goes either either to this bus, to this bus, or to both simultaneously. Mm. So we have all this weird addressing logic and stuff down here to determine which bank of of 128k gets selected, and or really which bank of 64 technically. So um, if I'm hearing you correct, Apple over-engineered this. And it may be part of the reason why it failed as a platform. It very well could have. Hmm. Well, yeah, you can, you can, you can, you could interpret it that way. Sure. Hmm. Yeah, you could say that. Hmm. Um, I think it, I think it actually failed due to its cost. Yeah. Its inability to run all Apple II software. 
right. and its reliability issues. Sure. I think those are really the over the engineering aspects. I mean, as, as I've said, the Apple three has got some really cool capabilities, like full digitized audio, multiple um, volume levels, um, much, uh, much better graphics, um, individual pixelized graphics, built in RGB video, mm -hmm. lots of really cool features, but uh, it just because of its expense and that the fact that it's like an 85 pound chunk of steel, right? technically aluminum but i call it steel because it's funnier um sure, sure. Mm -hmm. it just you know it, it ended up being a thing but so it's got these you know these data buses and you have to engineer for this because the computer can output to both this data bus and this data bus at the same time um for some of its weird video modes like uh, eight, certain 80 column modes or some of its high resolution modes, it's going to fetch data from there and from there at the same time and put it in, and put it into different serializers and blah, 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 blah. So you have to engineer for that. So that's basically what all of this junk does. They, what, what we're doing is um, when data, sorry, I'm trying to get it all on screen here. Uh, when data is being uh, written to uh, I think I don't have this connected correctly. Stand by. Ooh, I need to add some more lines to this. You can watch me do that. Um, when data is coming into, um, oh no, it's over here. I got it. It's connected correctly. When data comes into the RAM, it comes in over the, that D zero bus through the, these two. Um, mm -hmm. and then when it goes out, it goes out through these, these two chips, these specialized, uh, they're, they're, We'll just call them switches. And we have to use these switches to isolate it because of the way that the static RAM works. Because I'm using a single chip for the entire of the B bus and the single chip for the entire of the A bus instead of four separate chips, um, they, the buses kind of clash with each other, basically. Um, when they, In addition, the RAM that they use, we'll go back in here and I'll look at it right here. The, the original type of RAM has two different data lines. It's got a data output line and a data input line. So you can have this connected to two different buses simultaneously um, so that your read and write cycles, it can come in one way and go out the other way. Well, static RAM, which is what I want to use because it's more reliable, this stuff right here doesn't have that. It's got one bus for both in and out. So we have to have these switches to arbitrate that. So when data is coming in, this switch will be active or these mm -hmm. two switches will be active and these other two will be off. And then when data is being sent out to the computer, these switches will be active and these other two will be off. So they kind of flip back and forth so they don't they don't contend with each other. So that's mm -hmm. that's the basics of what that is. Neat. Um, yeah, that's all really there is to that. Uh, I've been working on this for a couple weeks now. And I have all the data nets, all the connections and all of that set together. So tonight I was just going to literally just hang out and 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 lay it out on a board and see what yeah. happens. I was going to say, this is kind of the exciting part where you get to um, uh, uh, kind of kajigger all of your, uh, <laughs> your stuff, kajigger all your stuff yes. to get it lined up. Yep. And this is a this is where we're if you were designing your own thing, so to speak, uh, your own clean design, you could just lay this out however you want, however you felt it fit. But we have to lay this out to fit in the form factor of this of this box. It has to fit on here. Sure. So the first thing that I have to do is I have to define a square or a, a the, the side the the board this in in KiCad so I know what it's how it's going to fit inside there so that's that's what we're doing um and we just we take a ruler and we measure things out and do the thing yeah so please Joe, wait while I did, measure crap you didn't always use KiCad what were you using previously um yeah uh I use uh two different apps um this is uh this is the uh wow everything is completely and utterly all messed up Great. Don't save that document. So, um, this is, so, so the uh, first program you're using is kid picks, right? Yes. Yes. Kid okay. picks. But right. you know, everything came out, uh, came out weird and pixelated. And um, whenever uh, I would get things back, there would be funky, like smiley faces all over the stuff. Yeah, I don't know like, why. If I can't so... use stamps, I'm not going to design the board. So yeah, it. exactly. 
Um, but uh, but this is the application that I use for um, quick layouts, fast yeah. layouts, because it's mm -hmm. called sprint layout, and that's what the heck right. it does. Um, uh, like, for example, I'm doing this other, this is just a, a quick little, this is the size of like a single little microchip, right? And rattle, rattle, rattle. Not anymore. I put a, I put a bumper in there. Oh, cool. I've got, I've got some feet off the bottom of my 8600. And so I, oh. I just, I pulled one of the rubber feet off. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Hey, it fits perfect. All right. It's Frodo Jedi. Hey Frank, how you doing, hey, buddy? Hey Frank. I've been in bed all day. Really? Um, Are you feeling any better? Not really. I think what it is is I'm going to end up having to get a root canal. Oh. 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 Pain on this side and the back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, it, I do, I do good in spurts. Like it doesn't have any pain at all for like hours and hours, and then all right. of a sudden, like it just mm -hmm. radiates through the whole side of my face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> So honestly, I think that that's what it is. I think that it's going to be, I'm going to have to go this week and I think it's going to end up being a root canal. Ugh. I, um, I have in my life, I've had so great. I've been so fortunate. I, oh, I know, I know people that are like, I ate a Dorito and like three teeth crumbled and I'm like, Oh man, I just, Oh, good. I don't know how, yeah. I don't know how. No, um, tooth pain is like the worst thing like ever out of any pain I've ever oh, experienced yeah. in my life. Mm -hmm. Dental stuff, right, right there. By Fake. Far the worst, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. By far the worst. Oh, I got a new shirt for tomorrow, by the way, guys. Oh yeah, what'd you get? I survived dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> My wife found it on Etsy and ordered it, and I'm like, oh, that's awesome. That's very funny. Today's mail, so I'm excited. <laughs> Love it. I apologize to everybody if I am potato cam right now. Uh, Streamyard is telling me my internet sucks. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, just just in case that's a thing. Um, as long fine. as you can hear see my screen and hear me talking, then that's all. Yeah, I care. no, it looks fine. Um, so so yeah. Um, what was I? What were we doing? I don't remember. I don't remember. <clears throat> um, um, yeah, I was, I was telling you about this program. Yeah. Um, yeah, this is Sprint Layout. Um, I like this program for quick and dirty layouts and for board cloning because it's tr really suited for that. Um, this is like I said, just a super quick thing where like if you. If you if like if you're doing something like utterly uncomplicated, this is not a complicated board. I'm mapping one pin to one pin type of thing, sure. and um, doing this just this simple two layer board. This thing is like one inch by one quarter of an inch. It's a tiny little board. Um, I know. I mean, it looks huge on screen, but like it's it's real size is like yeah, that, you know? quite quite wee. Yeah, but um, this is also for the Apple III. Um, mm -hmm. This is allows you to replace the bipolar ROMs with uh, more modern ROMs. Is that similar mm -hmm. size to your keyboard encoders then? It's little? Uh, even littler. Oh. So the keyboard encoder is kind of like this size. Oh, like a Pico right. size. Okay. Um, this chip is the size of the socket. Gotcha. Not the whole green thing, just the black mm -hmm. socket. So socket. Okay. The, cool. Yeah, it's a tiny little thing. But if you're doing more complex layout, um, KiCad works better because you can actually lay it out as a schematic electrically. So you can be like, this connects to that. I know that these signals go everywhere. You can go over it with a fine tooth comb. You'd be like, I've got every every net labeled, everything connected, everything figured out. You can work through the logic. Um, and then you can go over to the, the board here, um, the board layout part, and actually lay out the PCB uh, on here with all the proper measurements and stuff. And I believe it even has an auto routing tool. So if you're not like too worried about how it looks you just put all the things on it and hit click and it makes all the lines happen um you can also see to some extent all these little teal colored lines those are the net connections it uh KiCad also already knows which of these pins connect to all of the other pins based on how i have the schematic written that's here. awesome so it already it, it knows all of these things so we can just kind of roll with that uh, so although i did forget to like Put a lot of these capacitors and little blue capacitors in there, but so we'll see. When you put the schematic into KiCad, will mm -hmm. it auto translate the board layout from your schematic? Uh, to some extent, yes. So, um, what it's done here, uh, like I'm trying to get it in the middle there. So, these are all of the components mm -hmm. on the schematic. Sure. So we've got the memory chips, the 158 switch, 
We've got the SAP 574 switches, resistor nets, some other generic logic there, and a whole bunch of resistors. And then it knows uh, what connects to what. Okay. Because the schematic tells it what connects to what. Sure. So in theory, there's an auto route button. I don't know where it is. Um, I haven't gotten that far in learning KiCad yet. You're learning with me. I know. It, it, it will get, make some hilarious results. Yes. Let's say that. Um, but you, you get your board physically laid out the way you want it to look. And then you hit auto route and it'll just hook everything up for you. Or you can do it manually um, based on where the wires go uh, from, you know, with all these uh, the little, the little teal things. Um, if you're doing your own board design, mm -hmm. you're no longer using sprint layout. Rudy, yes, I do use sprint layout. I use it for simpler stuff. But if I'm doing more complex stuff that requires very specific um, uh, schematicizing in order for it to work correctly, I've been trying KiCad for that. This is actually the first more complex design I've done in a while. So we'll, that's why I'm relearning KiCad. I uh, I started with KiCad 4 and then have skipped all the way up to 7, um, if it tells you how often I use KiCad. But Rudy, anyway. <clears throat> Rudy, if you have to know, though, um, what actually happened is uh, Joe used to use Easy EDA. And then he got a call one day from Candace Bergen and he switched over to Sprint. It was weird. <laughs> These jokes are for old people. Uh, Billy! Billy, are you there? Um, so, yeah. So that's, that's, that's what I'm doing. Um, but again, as I said, because we have to design it around this physical layout, we've got to do a lot of other, how can I say... Um, Housekeeping first. We have to get the, the this physical shape laid out onto the design first. What is that, Ron? This is called a power book, Joe. Apple that made is... several. Yes. But oh, it has wait, a, it has a Drake it has a Drake battery inside. Ooh. Oh, that's, that's the one you were just doing. Yeah. Yes. Two hundred and thirty. Well, we'll get to that. Um, so now we got, I got to like figure out how big this board is. So this is the fun part because I, my calipers aren't big enough for this. Normally you would just put your calipers on this and figure out the exact dimension, but I can't do that. So we're going to do some, do some weird stuff here. But yeah, that you get to watch me as I measure things manually. Yay. Measuring stuff. It's boring. There. Look at this. That is 233 oh, and a half. Does that look about right? Oh, Frank. Hey. Ooh, parts. Are those um yeah. are those from my stuff? Yep. Actually, it's so funny. I um I actually just created a and GitHub four? and put the stuff out there just in case anybody was like, Oh, that's awesome. Like, oh, I can't wait. I can't yeah. wait for stuff to arrive. I need it now. Two thirty. So, were that the case, uh, anybody can now go out and get the parts. Oh, that's what? Awesome. So, I need. I haven't got the pieces yet, but the boards themselves came. Well, that's good. This needs to be exactly. Um, and I will tell you, if you ordered them from, L like LCS part whatever thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Jeebus. I uh I ordered actually um they're here somewhere, but I um they're at upstairs. But I ordered like a whole bunch of stuff from them. It literally took a month. Holy cow! It took a month, and it I was got like a shipment actually, notification. So maybe it just takes a while to I, get here. I got a shipment <laughs> notification too, and then a month later, the box arrived. <laughs> uh, now I do have a question for you. So the double ones, um, are those ones that I could use to replace the dual batteries in like the Macintosh too? Sure. Now, the Mac will, Josh also. Yes. Yes. I, w I will say though that the Mac Two, um, some like the little board that Apple put in there has like a capacitor on it to kind oh. of make things a little more like, you know, like better. I guess. This thing is ginormous, yeah. like butter. It makes it's like for better making. So my board does not integrate that, but my board does have um, diodes, which their yeah. board does not. 
Uh, I am not sure why a Mac 2 would ever attempt to charge the um, those ports, but you know, it only takes once. I took this thing apart, Joe, and now the screws don't fit. Well, that sounds like a personal problem. That's, Stop that's, doing it, computer. What? That's 3D printing for you. How long is this? I don't know. Do it. I want to draw it. Make it. Let me draw. What the? Oh, I thought you were like doing a rattle can. I am. Um, magnetizing. Uh, I'm magnetizing things. As you, as you do. Send to layer. Select. Oh, it turns out they don't actually fit in there. Oh, shit. Fire. What's Get the out beeping of there. noise in the background? Something at Frank's house. Oh, that could be my 3D printer. Oh, it's going zip, zip, zippy. Yeah, it's uh, X1 Carbon. Yeah, it's printing that ginormous waste bucket for the back. Oh, cool. Yeah. The poo poo bucket. Oh, oh shit! Like, well, that didn't solve anything. I want to set this. Yeah, Ron, together. this guy's got two batteries on board. Yeah, oh, sounds like a Mac Two to me. Yeah. Layer. And the Edge. power supply is as big as the case. That also that oh. that is also uh, that also scans. Yeah, sir. I was like, wow, this it, the heaviest part is the power supply. There we go. Cool. Can I set a better grid? Uh, yeah, let's set that grid. That's going to make life a little easier for me. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Why, why do you know work, screw? Snap to grid. Unless these were like one-time use right. screws. Oop. Um... trying to figure out how to do this here like it's so uh, sprint layout is way way easier <laughs> to use to be honest but um i'm really just kind of relearning how this application even works fair enough and i like i want to snap this to the grid like it's not fine i'll just redraw it f you <laughs> i don't know what 223 233 and a half okay. i have to remeasure it now I'm mad. Grumpy, grumpy. I don't know what engineer thought it was a good idea to use plastic tabs on these RAM sockets. Oh, is this SE or a Mac 2? Yeah, this is an original Mac 2. Yeah. Well, uh, in Apple's defense, um, who could afford RAM? That's true. <laughs> and then number two, uh, they wanted they wanted to be the ones to install it. So if I put in something that instantly becomes a tamper, yeah, I can sh like a tamper um, alert for anybody that comes to work on it for authorized service later. It seems like they've really got that figured out now, where it's just like, oh yeah, uh, you can't upgrade the RAM. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of kind of unless you unless you are uh, Colin Mister, in which case yes you can upgrade the RAM. Do it oh. well, That's really great. I'm gonna see if I can charge this without yeah. it catching on fire. Ah, oh, this application is such a pain in the butt. Oh. I don't have a power brick around, so that's gonna be difficult. So, Frank, your video card is in the mail. Awesome. I'm excited. It's headed to your house. Um, but I will tell you that you want to start looking on the Ebays for one of these babies. Now, what is that one? That is, uh, it's a Radius card. It's uh -huh. um, specifically the Radius Accelerated 24-bit graphics. Huh. Um, this is nice because cool. this actually, you can get... They have versions that uh, work with both 
68030-68040 in PowerPC machines, like this one right here. This has got the right version of the ROM. And this, um, the video on here is is Trez Fast. So this is, I, I, I would like to collect all of the, um, all of the video cards. Yeah. There's quite a few out there. But that's, that is an expensive endeavor, good sir. Yeah. Oh, I also, there's some other stuff in the box I forgot to tell you. Oh. That will be it, just for funds. I just like for funds. Yeah. It's, there are some whimsical things in there, which I know that you like. Well, who doesn't like whimsical? It's true. It's true. Besides the Germans. <laughs> Diamond. Yeah, this is a Voodoo One. Oh. Uh, that no. somebody was like, you know what? I can't find surface mount caps, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna replace a bunch of the surface oh. some of the surface mount caps with tantalum, <laughs> and some of them with like big old can yeah, like through yeah. hole. <laughs> yeah, I was <laughs> like, I'm not, I'm not sure who did this, but you know. Well, apparently they were in a whimsical mood that day. Yeah, special place <laughs> in hell. I'm thinking is. Oh man. Yeah, the Mac 2, I've got to replace the caps and the power supply on that guy. Oh, yeah. No, no do, 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 do. I have um, I have some cool stuff that I'm eventually going to throw in my Mac 2. Like, I've got this um, yeah, accelerator okay. board 2. That's which, nice. Um, it's a raster ops card, and it yeah. does who knows what. It's a mystery. Yeah, it's it's a mystery. Now I have a radius, like an actual radius brand monitor, like a, a portrait display. Yeah. Uh, but no, uh, no power, so I've got to pull it apart and see what's wrong with it. Uh, it came that way, so I have no idea. Yeah. Came with I a do, bunch of black stuff I got. I do have a big old raster ops. Like, look at look at all that like oh, sip that, man. sip memory on it. Oh, look at that. <laughs> yeah, it's just crazy. That's easy. Yeah. Well, some of and, these extremes were used for doing crazy scientific research and stuff. Oh know? yeah, and here here's my dual page display card that I was telling you about. Oh yeah. Um, this one you actually it's socketed. All the RAM is socketed, okay. so I had to upgrade it to get yeah. 16 shades of gray. Yeah. But it sucks because it's got a the 13W3 connection on it. Yeah. So you either have um, you either buying a very expensive adapter or you're mm -hmm. buying like a very expensive it, it's expensive whatever you're doing yeah it's just expensive you got an expensive cable or an expensive adapter or yeah some such thing huh interesting now to measure this thingy so i i had bought a last week i had bought and it came in I don't know, earlier this week, maybe? I don't remember what they did. Yeah. A mirror drive door uh, G4. Oh, yeah, nice. So that I can Ooh, that a multi-session CD to do EOS mm -hmm. on uh, the uh, UMAX 500 that I picked up. Neat. Because Garth this sent me some instructions, but you have to be able to burn a multi-session disk to do it, I guess. Oh. So, uh, so, yeah, so I didn't have anything that I had readily available that will do it so i bought a mm -hmm. i got a hell of a deal on it because it was like just over 100 bucks shipped for the mirror drive door mac mm -hmm. it came with the original uh video editing keyboard yep. the hang on with all the you know colored stuff that's colored <gasps> for all the meds. and then uh the original mm. clear uh mouse and and it actually came in the original box with the packaging, all the manuals, the CD. So, pretty good deal. That is cool. Yeah. Very nice. It's not very often I come across a lot of people that actually saved original boxes. Yeah. Especially for something that age now. So... Yeah. C V. Let's put this right here and see what happens. Is that on the line? It is well, it kind of does. Do 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 do. Using KiCad is stupid awesome. Or it's just stupid. And yep, this needs to move up by one. Nope. 
There we go. Which means that's off. Yes, this needs to be up there. Hmm. Yep, there we go. And what's the length of this line? 101,727. 10727. There we go. There's the shape of our logic board. Neat. White lines. Going through my mind. Just like that. See? Now I've got to like do other measurements, like how far in from the edge are the things and blah blah blah. You know what? You should just make the board look exactly like that, Joe, and just like bodge wires everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, just or actually, no, museum. just send that. That's your pick and place, that's your, your fab file, and just leave it and just let the AI at um JCL PCB just melt. Yeah, oh, JLC PCB. Here, look at my yeah. bench while I do this. Not, not my bench. Uh, I'm gonna hide that for a second because I, I need to log into my router and find out where my internet is going because this is weird. It's it. Hey, if it says Bitbucket, then you'll know. Now we can go to my right screen. Um, well, no, this goes here, and then we reshare. Oh. We add that. There you go. Hey, look, everybody. It's my network. Neat. <sighs> yeah, so apparently my internet... My, my the connection between the hinterlands and Streamyard servers is the problem, because, it, because as you can see, I'm only pushing one megabit. One yeah. megabit. Yeah. That's it. Uh, two zoomed. See, one or two. It's a little higher now, but it's like it's like nothing. This should I this should not be a problem for me streaming this stream. Uh, and yet StreamYard keeps saying, you have potato internet. I don't know why. Hi, Arenis Electro Electro Channel. Francois is here. Rudy is here. Eric is here. Garth. Yes, hi, everybody. Bob is here. Hi, Bob. Yes, uh, Kike had screwed up some stuff when he upgraded from six to seven. Oh, yeah, I had to like go through like whole different layers to get it upgraded. Yeah, that was fun. Once you make a board layout, can KiCad auto-generate the schematics? I don't know if it can do it in reverse. I don't think it can. You can go from schematics to board, but not the other way around. Yeah. Um, uh, somebody was asking another question about, you can use free CAD together with Kai CAD and work on the outline of both sides. Yep, that's cool. Um, oh, yeah. Are you sure your ISP didn't hear your carrier and switch you to dial up over internet service? Okay. Um, and then somebody had another uh, question about KiCad. How do I find KiCad compared to Sprint Layout? Okay, so um, very interesting. So I think Sprint Layout is way easier to use. Like, way, way easier. But it lacks a lot of the polish and fit and finish and special tools and all of that stuff. Um. And it's, it doesn't have the schematic function. This is for literally doing the PC part using predefined shapes, and that's it. So if you already know, like if, you're, if your design is straightforward and uncomplicated, uh, Sprint Layout is great for that. And I mean, that's the whole idea. Sprint, lay, sprint fast. Um, that's, that's its thing. But if you are designing something from scratch using circuit theory, first and then going to a board layout after that um i think KiCad or any any, any true eda application is going to do a better job um because you can just you can take your your components pop it into the schematic and actually connect it schematically and again review it electrically um or electronically or logically or however you want to do it to make sure it's going to function the way you need it to function pull that over into the the board side and then do the routing and all that um, case in point, even this simple design, um, I submitted this design to GLC PCB uh, to have a few built, then realized about 15 minutes later the design was wrong. Oh, no. And it, because it didn't have the net 
capability to know this is supposed to connect to that and it missed stuff. So I had to go back in and redesign it. And by the time I went to reload upload it to GLC PCB, they had already started producing the first design, so I wasted twenty five dollars. Great. So, you know. I mean it's twenty five bucks, it's a prototype, I'm not too worried about it. That's just part of the way the business of doing the thing, but yeah. Yep, but anyway. Um so back to this thing I do. So now what I need to do, the next thing that is set, um, geometrically important is where the holes go through the board on the left and right sides here and here for these stupid connectors. These are the dumbest connectors. I can't find exact replacements. I have a couple of options coming for these connectors so I can test them and figure out how they're actually going to lay out on the board, but there are holes on the back of the board here that the pins from the Apple III actually go through. So I need mm -hmm. to figure out the, where those are located on the board. So that's the next part. So we're going to do that by doing some measurements like this. So we figure out how far from the edge of the board. Well, first off, let's get the diameter of these. These little holes. Not the easiest thing to do. This is saying they're 1.57. So I'm going to jot that down. 1.57. That's how they were measured that way that way. So I'm going to measure them a different way. Measure them this way. Ding! I heard a beep. It was I. Ding! Yeah, it looks pretty close. That calls it 1.71. So I am inclined to think those are 1.72 uh, diameter holes because that is a relatively standard hole diameter um, that I found simply from experience. So we'll do 1.72, not 172. That would be true. Um, now we got to figure out how far they are from the edge of the board. And that distance is... One point six two diameter. One point six two mm from edge of board, and we'll probably want to check the other side of the board. It's probably uniform, but we'll check it anyway. Yep, it's that's one point seven four. So it's not quite uniform. but that's probably close enough that I could just say that it is. And that's 1.67. So let's do, let's divide the two. 1.74 plus 1.62 divided by two, 1.68. So let's just call them 1.68 millimeters from the edge of the board. How's it sound? Sounds like a good, it's, yeah, I mean, we're talking about tenths, hundreds of a millimeter here. Like there's plenty of room for error. Um, so now I have to figure out how far it is from the bottom of the board, which would be this corner here, to the hole. So that's that. Uh, bottom corner to hole is... other one is it also 14.2 or is it some other dimension see you on some other channel um <laughs> yeah it's about 14.99 so 
So we can do the average of those as well. 14.82 plus 14.99 divided by 2. 14.905. So we'll do 14.9. And then its height from the top will be dictated by the spacing of these holes, which is the standard tenth of an inch or 2.54 millimeters, but I'm going to measure it anyway. Top corner, corner, to hole. So the top corner to the hole is right here. It's this one. Without the fuzzy in there. Okay. Right, 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 right. Those bamboos are they're they're a little noisy in my opinion. Yeah, it's it's not as <laughs> I thought it would be with the uh, front door and the uh, you know the whole thing enclosed. I really thought it'd be a little quieter. It's not horrible, but yeah, no, it's not bad. But um, compared to as I was saying, compared to like an Ender three, sure, point seven seven that has the uh, silent board installed. If it weren't for the fans, you wouldn't know the Ender three was running. Like it's just. It's like insanely quiet. So let's get the average of these. So it's 10.63 plus 10.77 divided by 2. And that's uh, that can't be correct. 10.63 plus 10.10.77 divided by 2. So that's 10.7 on the nose. Cool. So that tells us what that is. OK. Cool. So now I need to start putting these together. Um, and I'm not quite sure how to do this because these holes pass through the board. So they're kind of like, they're not vias exactly. They're more like edge cuts. They're like drills. Oh my gosh, who is this? It's Havo! It's your worst nightmare. Hey. Yeah, how you doing, buddy? Hello. Hello, lads. How are you? I'm honky dory. How are you guys doing? Good. Belligerent and numer. Oh, wait, I already did it. <laughs> um, so Run. I need to add on edge cuts a. <laughs> you got a haircut? Uh, no, I just I went to the same place that uh, Garth gets his hair done. So I went to the same place and look what happened. Tiny. No. <laughs> and then also 1.72. Via type through. Yep. Let me do that. Via hole. Yep. See, I can't do a via hole. So I have to do a drill. Yep. So that would be a circle. A circle. So I wish I, there was a tool for a real illustrator to convert radius. to this crap. It's going to be half. Yeah. <laughs> because radius is half the diameter. This S cut is crap. So, it's so difficult to, to two use. Two is point eight to six. I would just love to use Illustrator. Eight just eight bring it over here, and that's it. But yeah, edge cuts. Boop. There you go. So that's our that's our boop. Um, I am going to add a footprint as a reference. Um, these uh, holes that I'm making through the board are on two point five four. Um, millimeter centers. So if I get a connector that's already on 2.54 and put it exactly where I need to do, then I can just drop these little vias on top of it and then it'll be done. Pin header 2.54, sure. 1 by 25. Like that. So that will help me get it exactly where it needs to be. So Let's figure out our measurements. So from the top corner, we need to be, or from the edge, we need 1.68 millimeters from the edge of the board. So let's draw a line that is 1.68 millimeters in length. Uh, seven, seven. Yeah, I can't get that exact, so we're gonna increase our grid size or decrease our grid size 0.1 let's go all the way up to there 
1.727. Or is it, was it 1.6? Is it 1.68? Is that what 1. it was? 1.68. Six seven six. Will that work? That works. So we take you and we move you to be right there, which means our I are mechanic. Are you? How mechanic are you? Play one on television. We play one on television. Got it. So then we're going to move this. So then I have to have a line here. Where that just kisses the edge of that. Yep, like that. And that's our hole. Now the thing needs to be how far from the top edge? From top corner, 10.7 millimeters. So let's measure a thing that's 10.7. I'm proud of you working on millimeters. We have to. Ah, stop it. Do that. There we go. Um, Javier, how did you make out with your board after? Did you uh, get that nastiness fixed? No, not yet. It's gonna take me a while. It looks pretty bad. Yeah, yeah. I got. I gotta draw the lines in a paper to know exactly where they go, and I'll, I'll do the. Adam told me you just do it under underneath. Going to do right. rotate. Yeah, it's better. He has rotate. a great idea. Yeah, Steve had a pretty bad uh, Macintosh today. I saw on the stream. Yeah, yeah. That battery that bomb was pretty. Yeah, it's was pretty great. bad. Yeah. <laughs> Move. So that needs to be centered right there. I'm happy to report I was able to successfully um, cap swap a power supply Ooh, with lodge nice. wires. Yeah. That's where it's at. First Got time it. doing such a project. The bucket is finished. Ooh. Yay! What's now, the bucket for again? Promptly it catches the poo in the back of the machine. Oh, cute. Uh, See, cool it's a pretty good size, Joe. It's about almost so, a foot tall. So how long did it take to print? Oh, geez, yeah. About two hours. Yeah, I, I just... <laughs> it's made with the slope and everything, and it's got a little window here. I'm not I sure just, why. I just have one of these on the on the desk behind oh, my yeah. printer, and it just catches it. So do your states uh, recycle it yet? Recycle what? The leftover schmo from 3D printers. I have no clue. So I can tell you for sure, like our no. local landfill here says that recycling is a myth. I'm in Florida, so... They actually showed us, too. They're like, yeah, it's you see cool. all the recycling that gets picked up by the separate truck? There it is being dumped into the same garbage as the rest of it. <laughs> we, we have a similar problem here. We, we live on yeah. an island, right? So any carbon oh, yeah. feel good. Uh, to, ship, to ship recyclables off the island is carbon positive, I guess, because all the diesel used to ship them. Um, so it's kind of um, foolish to do yeah. it, um, but it still gets done. I suppose you'd have more polluting by running the fuel to haul it than to do it. Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. That that's how they view it. But you know, some stuff is recycled here. Um, aluminum cans are usually pressed into ingots, so they uh, they get shipped out because they're worth shipping because they're you know aluminum ingots. Mm -hmm. um, but like. Glass isn't recycled here at all, uh, except for. You, don't bother printing it. Just, yeah, you know. it's just there's too much. Um, that uh, if you can't just take glass and wash it and reuse it for the exact same thing, yeah, it's not worth it because it, yeah. it, there's just too much energy needed to melt and temper and reform it into something else. Sure. Which, which I'm surprised they haven't just figured out how to grind it up into a soft powder and pour it back into the ocean. Right, right. Like, <laughs> Actually, and that is that. That's the number one use for um for glass is an aggregate for other manufactured materials. But right. taking glass and turning it back into glass is very yeah. Costly. It's it makes no sense. But no. taking glass and grinding it into a fine powder and placing it between the toes of Republican politicians, <laughs> <laughs> untapped market. 
See, I always figured you just put it in the foreskin of the Republicans. Oh, wow. Oh, no. Well, they're no, 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 no. Sorry. Yahweh's got their mark all over those guys. They <laughs> snip and the clip. Ear marks, though, so. Then we do a bit of sounding. You know, it's just it's a sound. <laughs> yes. There. Yes. Thank you. Guys, I'm a monetized channel. Be careful. Mm -mm. Well, that's as far as we went. That's not anymore. We went. <laughs> I didn't say get a funnel and directly pour it oh into God. anybody's pee hole. That would be going too far. <laughs> would it <laughs> <laughs> well we're going to come on study. <laughs> things you didn't think you were going to talk about tonight oh man oh uh, so what would be the best utility to use to copy a real um hard drive that i have in this se uh mm -hmm. to a image uh cd so rescue copy, uh, copy? yeah I just will... paste them. I, I, I can field this one. You you yeah. mount the image on your blue SCSI and you have the physical drive in the yeah. other machine and you select the files and you copy them over to the other one. You just drag them over. Now, if you want I it to be not know why, sound. I don't know why people are just like, you don't understand. I got to use disk copy and like take 19 hours to do this file. I, I don't get that. I, uh, I, I heavily use DD Rescue in Linux uh, for mm -hmm. a lot of things. And uh, yeah, it's it's fantastic for. How can I use How can I use DD Rescue on my Mac SE? I just I'm glad oh, well, you hear Ryan. Just that's... take the drive out and you use it on the SCSI adapter in your PC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Seems dangerous. Seems dangerous. <laughs> that's something yes. that MI6 would do. Now I've got a whole screw. I uh, I was actually part of a um, an investigation uh, a few years back uh, where we were the first people to question the forensic validity of uh, the police's uh, forensic imaging setup mm -hmm. and we actually won uh, because mm -hmm. they were foolish and they would do a clone like a, mm -hmm. a forensic clone right. and then turn the computer back on reassemble right. the computer turn it back on to verify that it worked so they could give it back to the person being investigated right and yeah. that obviously would void their forensic yeah, it's not uh, the same now. It's, it's not, not the same. same, right? So I can't verify the forensic uh, uh, checksum. Right? Ryan, are we are we going to have a conversation about how chain of evidence works, especially when it comes to laptops mm -hmm. that may be at one time been the property of you know anyone? Yep. Anyone, you know. Yep, I, uh, I like I said, I represented the defense in two cases. Uh, I'm obviously not going to go into the details, but yeah, uh, one of them was a who owned what laptop and how do you verify the person on it is the person that they're in the process of um, charging. Sure, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the answer is you can't. Yeah. It's weird. Chain of evidence. This weird chain. thing. Yeah. yeah it's, a, it's an interesting chain, chain, chain. It's an interesting concept. But it's neat to, I was neat to go in and see the, you know, the police is set up, how they clone things, how they, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, at the time they still had a machine because you couldn't directly take uh, data off certain cell phones. Mm -hmm. They actually had a machine that would take a forensic photocopy of the screen, like take a picture of the screen at the highest yeah. possible resolution for mm -hmm. the evidence. It was pretty cool. It is pretty neat. How is this possible? I think I think my favorite part is where um, they were using Norton Ghost. They clone. <laughs> <laughs> but it's what all the but it's what all the government uses. It's got to be good. Yeah, right? it's got to be. They got that contract, so it's got to be fine. I mean, it's writing a header to the drive, the, the destination fine. clone. It's, it's fine. probably fine. It's probably fine. Yeah. Well, we uh, we were walking into the Ten building points. and the. The uh, investigating police officer said, "You know, if Buddy had just admitted to being guilty, he'd be charged and out of jail now." I was like, "Aren't you supposed to believe he's innocent until you can prove he's guilty?" Right. Hey, that's really that's great to know. Um, is this why you didn't go to law school? <laughs> is was it is, was that the reason you didn't go to law school, or right. was it or was it just because uh, you didn't have the grades? What well, you're it? a dumb cop. Yeah, I mean, not that I would say that to him. Anyway, I just found it funny that, you know. Yeah. It's 14.87. Long story that? short, we won both cases. So. Oh, well, that's good. That's yeah. good. Star Why witness. Is this mismeasured? I must have this mismeasured, guys. Oh, no. What was I doing? Is it Imperial or Her Majesty's Metric? <laughs> Her Majesty's Metric. Okay. Or His Majesty's Metric, I should say. Well, 
we don't want really accept that yet. Eighty eight point four. We have to next week. It's a big day. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> did, did you notice that on the uh, invitation it says Queen Camilla, not Queen yeah, Consort? They dropped, they dropped the Consort. Yeah. <laughs> Body's not even cold in the grave, and they're already changing things the Queen put in place. 18. I tell you, that was one hell of a long game. <laughs> oh, it was. It was 100%. What was she, 70, 72 years on the throne? 70, mm-hmm. 70 something. That's a long time. Long, long, long. Can you imagine time. having oh, the same job for 72 better. years? Yeah, no. seventy five years. Well, if so. you pay, you get paid like that. Yeah, I wouldn't mind. Yeah, fair enough. But you can't be yourself. You're not allowed to have emotion. You're not allowed to smile. You got to hate your kids. Like it seems like a. No, I think Where? that was a bonus. <laughs> what 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 job is that, Ryan? Uh, to be the queen. Oh, and not the well, fun. Queen. I mean, have you met her kids? Mm. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I mean, everybody wants to be Freddie Mercury. Well, you know, mm-hmm. live Actually, Freddie yeah. Mercury. Yeah. Right. Hell yeah. Hmm. Love Freddie Mercury. Oh, yeah. Loved his cats. That... Actually, there's a great picture of Freddie Mercury with, like, some of his friends. And, and they they had, it was, they all looked exactly, they were, they were all, we own one pair of, uh, of jorts. Yeah. And we have we're the same mustache. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, you find your people. You find yeah. your people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, like you know, that's you're, accurate now. Yeah, you're saying, you know, yeah, you, uh, you know, you need to borrow a pair of swimming trunks. It's but it's easier if they're all if you're all the same. It's true. It's right? true. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nothing wrong with it. No, I'm certainly not casting aspersions on. I'm just saying it was funny because they all says looked exactly the same. It's Jerry Seinfeld, as he says. You know, that's why all men are dressed the same on wedding days. Yeah, it's yeah. not. Do you take Brad? It's do you take this man? Right. So if one of them doesn't show up, they just all move down the line. Right. <laughs> cool. All right. So now we can take this and put this over on the other side. Right? Can we? Oh, apparently somebody's oh, talking oh. to you in chat, Joe. Somebody's talking to me. Double click the leftmost line and enter the start Y plus length as end Y. Okay. If you say so. Double click the leftmost line. Oh, yeah, you can just, like, make it length. Yeah. That would be really smart. Let's do that. Let's <laughs> actually do that. So we, we're not bringing up the real elephant in the room here tonight? What? Ron's hair. Yeah. Oh, we, oh, we, we, it, that, this dude. is, like, the ninth time. <laughs> but it's it's fine. It's fine. Um, I went to the same place that Garth gets his hair done. Right. And... What that what that consists of? It's it's in lawn and garden at Lowe's. Right. So they they run a uh, riding mower over you a couple times, and then they get out like a weed whacker and they kind of do the sides, right. and then they just park you in front of a um, leaf blower for twenty minutes. So did you go to a new place, or was this like? I didn't go anywhere. Actually, it's my normal hair. It's just that I've I've probably walked like five or six miles today and i think okay. at some point i was just like i touched my hair after it had been in a hat and it just stayed like that so like we would say here in newfoundland you you went out and let the wind blow on you yeah mm-hmm. gotcha that sounds right did you let it i mean i don't know what that's like and i'm sure javier also uh, to some extent joe uh understands Ryan, that's ridiculous. I've seen you without a shirt. It's like hey, it does work. Your 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 back looks like any Italian person I've ever seen. True, true. <laughs> true. I'm I am the bald. Damn. Gorilla. Oh, what was the guy from Aqua Teen Hunger Force? Oh, uh, Carl. Yeah, Carl. <laughs> For some reason, that's just what popped into my mind when he said that. Yeah. Or the father got, from... Uh, so I was you guys got to get out of here. I've got a long night of downloading porn at 44.5 kilobits per second. What does that sound like? <laughs> I'm kidding. I got a cable moving back here. Uh, the dad from what, right? Uh, uh, Big Mouth. The, 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 Jew, the Jewish father from Big Mouth. Oh, yeah. He's also hairy and... Oh, is he? Loud. Oh, yeah. yeah there's an oh, episode where he I takes just... off his shirt. Wait. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Right, 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 right. Yeah. I, Cause I, when I think about, for whatever reason, I thought about Nick's dad. No, no, he's no, like I mean, the very, the very quiet yeah, guy, yeah. and I'm like, what? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
you know that that series they're like you know what we're gonna do i, I think they said like a ninth season or something and then yeah. that's it how is that's that? it nick kroll has made enough money that's it i highly that's doubt that that, <laughs> that 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 he's made enough money off of no it? that he's gonna not make money Oh no no no! I just think that they're like we're done with doing. No no no! I mean, I I don't see that. Off. I feel like I feel like comedy net or Netflix is gonna come out and be like, here's a large sack of cash. Yeah, ah, season ten. Mm-hmm. Yeah, gonna be like, yeah, yes. I I would like, you know, because it's him and and uh, John Mulvaney. Yeah, I would, I would like to see some more. Uh, uh, the what's the thing they do with um? Oh hello. Oh um. Oh, hello. I'm pulling a complete brain fart. I know what you're talking about. Oh, I think it's called Oh, Hello. Is it just I, Oh, Hello? I have no idea. But you thanks to Ron, I am... Shane fine. Giegland and the other guy. Yeah, it's just Oh, Hello. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they, yeah I was going to yeah. say, because it's how it's the, oh, like, oh, the hello. oh, Hello show. Yes. There's a comma there. Mm-hmm. Um, I'll tell you what I wish came back. Um, Paradise PD. Oh yeah, I actually I rewatched the pilot for that the other day. It was because I was thinking know, about Nagels. And what was the other one where the, that was? Oh, sorry, Paradise PD is the replacement for the one where there are bears. The bear in the oh sorry. Uh, what the hell is it called? Oh, I gotta figure it out anyway. It was the. It got canceled, and they couldn't bring it to Netflix, so they made Paradise PD. Okay. Um, Is that Reno 911? That? Was that Reno 911? No, no. Paradise PD is, is a TV, is a cartoon. It, ah. But the one that was originally before that was the one that had um, like a bear, and they all worked in a um, in like a state park or a national park. Mm-hmm. Um, the bear was like could talk and was like an asshole. Oh. Uh, he was like Yogi Bear, but worse. Hmm. Ah. Okay. I don't know. I sure don't know what that's a spinoff of. What? What? It was a spinoff of something. Oh, well, Paradise PD was a spinoff because they couldn't bring Paradise PD to. They couldn't bring this other show to Netflix. They didn't have the rights. Right. Right. What's the show? What's the original show? That's what I'm trying to remember the name of. Right. So am I. I'm out here out on the Wikipedia article, and you think that they would just put that like in the top? Yeah. Uh, Brickleberry. Oh right. Okay. From 2012 to 2015. And they tried to bring it to Netflix, but they weren't allowed. They couldn't get the rights, so they made Paradise PD instead. So one nice thing about being under the weather and staying in bed was uh, I finally watched the entire season three of Picard. Oh, okay. yeah. I haven't watched yeah, it yet. It good. Yeah, I've heard that's good stuff. I, I, I saw the first episode one because everybody said it sucked, so I just didn't even bother. I, I was sad the second season ruined Q, apparently. I watched oh, the first episode. Geez. Just yeah. wait. Yeah, three is is Q still in three? No, I didn't see him at all in three. There's a lot of stuff that got written out of three. Okay, three was pretty good. I thought it was good because my friend that's followed hey. it this whole time, I'm like, okay, well, I haven't. I watched. I watched the very first episode of the first season, mm-hmm. and then I didn't watch anything else because everybody was like, ah, it's not great, so you can skip it. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll skip it. And then he showed me the first episode of season three. And I was like, hey, this is really great. This feels like actual Star Trek, except, I mean, except kind of grown up a little. It feels like next gen, but grown up a little bit, maybe. And and he was like, yeah, it's pretty great. And I said, well, so they got the one lady with the curly hair. And I get that. And I know that they had Annika Hansen on there. And I said, but what happened with like the girl? And she was she had a twin and the girl and one of them exploded. And he goes, oh, don't worry about that. Yeah. Like, just, okay. Yeah, that's all gone. And, and I was so, like, okay, well, what happened with uh with data and like somebody don't, don't don't worry about that. Oh, okay. Um, so what happened with there's like a lady and she's a scientist, but she becomes a board queen. Don't worry about that. <laughs> so what's what's the deal with the Romulans like in a bunch of like board cubes? Don't worry about that. I'm like, oh, so it sounds like they just like they got to season three and they were like they just hit reboot. They were just sorry, sorry about the first two seasons. And he's reboot. like, Yeah, that's kind of it. <laughs> Well, it could be worse. They could have came out like Enterprise and be like, "Oh, by the way, it's all a simulation." Yeah. Oh, what? well, just the last episode. Yeah. But was it? 
I yes. don't think it was. It was. I think the whole season was. He never, he never, like, Riker doesn't show up in any of the other episodes, so. I know. I mean, but... he was the chef. You'd have seen him. I Plus, suppose. I'm just saying, like, how, like, I mean. But I, also, I also despise Enterprise. Like, I could not get into it. The dog was the best part. Oh, yeah. really? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Poor yeah. Um. So, uh, Frank, did you happen to watch after the credits on the very last episode of Picard? Uh, oh, it's, it's awesome because Samuel Jackson shows up and invites Picard to join the Avengers Initiative. And there's snakes <laughs> on the Enterprise. <laughs> it's time to get these mop and snakes <laughs> on this fucking bridge. <laughs> time we open the view screen. I don't think I did catch the. You need to go back and watch the very last episode after the credits. Well, I had to have because very, it, very insanely, incredibly important that you do that. It had to. I had to have seen it because it, it right after that, I didn't know if there was another episode or not, and it switched automatically to the one with Kirk. Oh no, you you missed it, buddy. So then I had to have missed. You it. missed very important things after the credits. I will. Uh, I'll have to re redo that one. But I thought it was good. That was actually a good season. Oh my, so the poor egg that I was working on all day was one more issue after another after another. I have an oil issue now. I have mystery oil appearing inside my intercooler. Uh-oh. So my turbo is either dumping oil into my intercooler or the PVC is siphoning it out of the engine and putting it in the intercooler. Either way, neither, neither of it's which a pain is... in the ass. <laughs> yeah. Neither of which is For those good. of us who don't know engine, what? Well, there's there's a thing on an engine called a turbo that goes whoosh 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 whoosh. Oh, it's it makes power... make car... things thing make car go fast. Got it. Yes, okay. it, it, it uses it it, it 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 adds compressed air to the engine using exhaust gas to spin a an impeller. Spin um, a spinny. Okay. And then yep. it makes the car go faster. Well, that thing has seals in it, and it also has an oil line going to it to cool it with oil and to lubricate it with oil. And sometimes those seals fail, and the oil likes to sneak its way into the turbocharger housing and down into what's called an intercooler, which is a device that's used to cool the compressed air so that it's not hot air entering the engine, because that's not efficient. You get cool air entering the engine, compressed cool air, which is more efficient. Cool. And sometimes, really? if that happens at a very high level, um, you get what's called a runaway. So the engine actually starts to run on its leaked out oil, and you can't turn it off. Yeah. And no, it over and diesel, seizes the block. It's a diesel. It's a diesel, yes, as you Americans gotcha. call it. Gotcha, because diesel, diesels, it'll burn anything that's not volatile. <laughs> correct, correct. Kerosene, whale oil, it doesn't care. It'll burn it. Um, more specifically, you could get like a, um, a deuce and a half military vehicle. Those mm-hmm. actually run on anything. And yep. I literally mean anything. Yep. Use that's motor that's oil, that's gasoline, yep. jet fuel, diesel, kerosene, Taco whale Bell. oil. Seal oil, mineral Taco oil, Bell. <laughs> Taco Bell waste Hold oil. On. <laughs> Run from so. the border, am I right? <laughs> I thought about it, but I didn't want to say anything. Anyway, long story short, I certainly hope it's not the turbo. It's an easy job, but it's an expensive one. Yeah. They put the turbo right on top of the engine, so it's very easy to access. But the turbo is about three thousand dollars. So, what is this? Uh, it's a uh, my twenty ten uh, Volkswagen Touareg. Ooh, I love Volkswagen. Hey, which is which is Javier, a nice place to oh, be. I'm sorry, but mm-hmm. it's expensive when it breaks. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, Ron. Go ahead. I interrupted. No, I was going to say since Javier is friends with Vince. Did you see Vince's post today oh. in Apple II Enthusiasts? Yes, we are I'm together gonna... in the project. Just for you to oh, know. Oh, that's great. Because so I, I, I would love to build one of those. It looks like a lot of fun. Mm-hmm. Can, can you enlighten uh, what that is for the rest of us? It yes. is the it is a through hole Apple II card. I mean, I, 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 mean I don't know card. what this enthusiast thing is. Oh, I, I think I did see a post somewhere on a on an Apple II VGA card. It might have been and, on Facebook. And Vince released all the stuff. Like, there's a GitHub. You can just go download all the stuff. You can download. Cool. You can make. You just make one. As someone who sells uh, stuff on the internet, I do not approve. <laughs> well, I'm there's kidding. nothing stopping you, probably. Well, well, Conceivably. Well, Joe, will you make one for me? Sure. There you go. Yeah. Problem solved. Communism yeah. works. Mm-hmm. 
Come you do some work, you say? No, I was not. I was being, no, I was being, like, I'm sorry. That. I had to say that. Oh my God. It doesn't ever. Really? Uh, <laughs> There's a difference between socialism and communism. Yes. One works and one doesn't. Actually, well, all of them are very nice in, in paper. Yeah. Unfortunately, human greed and human ability to exactly. um, collect exactly. things it interferes doesn't work with both. With humans. <laughs> yeah. Just at a lesser extent on the socialism. Yeah. Doesn't work in humans. <laughs> yeah, I always say it would be humanity would be great if it wasn't for all the people. It's true. Uh, you know. Was Thanos really a villain? Yes. Because here's the deal. If you're gonna make a wish and you're really worried about like like <laughs> oh we're running out of resources, why kill half the consumers? Just make more resources. Uh, oh, I'm just saying. Everybody's I just sorry. did. Anybody stop? It's like we're we're too busy punching you to explain how. We're too oh. busy punching you to explain. It would just be. It would be so much simpler. All uh, Thanos. Rather, it's it's oh. his his, oh. his approach to this is the same approach that the 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 uh, Federal Reserve has had since forever. It's money. like sorry, to control inflation, we have to reduce the number of consumers. Rather than just make more resources available to the consumers that already exist, weird. Or we just print more money and see what happens. No, I'm not, not maybe not necessarily money. print more money. But I don't just know. Make more resources available to J16. people that are already consuming those things. It's keeping wages flat for 40 years really hasn't panned out the way that anybody other than billionaires has found acceptable. Hmm. We Look, we can start actually laying the board out now. Isn't this oh magical? Oh my god. Good love god. It. I love it. It's a freaking miracle. Well, well, um, do you guys have any suggestions as to what to do with uh, missing uh, pads on service mount stuff on like an Apple 2C or not Apple 2C, uh, LC2? Yeah, trace it back. Actually, if it's an LC2, player? buy another board. Really? <laughs> yes. Those things are worthless. Buy another board. Yeah. But I got only one board, and it's in front of me. And I, I want know, to but it. you buy another board. Actually, an LC2, it, 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 it probably will turn on without the cap even there. Well, I mean, all, the, all the caps were leaked out, and it's still booted. And still yeah, signed. I was going to, like, an LC2, <laughs> you could probably remove all the caps, and it'll still work. Yep. The only thing that won't work is the sound. Yeah. It'll just function. They mm -hmm. Also, those service mount caps, they, um, they let out some pretty cool ghosts when they get angry. They do. Yep. <laughs> I was just sitting they there, like and all of a sudden, I was surrounded by smoke. I was like... Yes. What's going on? What do they call a Mac seance? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's funny because we were filming a, a commercial at the school, and um, I was just there because I had to be there in case they needed some IT support. And uh, I was there was all the kids were waiting in the in my my office or my room, my classroom for uh, it was like the green room. So the kids were all and I'm over here in the corner soldering and. Just stinks of fish, and I'm pulling off service mount caps. Yeah. The kids are like, "What are you doing?" Yeah, you know, what else would I do when I'm here? Sitting? Ryan, what's the deal with this like Star Wars thing in front of like a quarter of your face? Oh, sorry, it's uh, I, I have uh, Jedi Knight running. I was like, am, "Am I looking at Frank's stream?" It's yeah. like for a while, like Frank just had like a window that yeah. was just like occupying sorry. most of the space. I was like, well, "I was going to play some." About? I was going to play some Outcast too, um, like the band. Yeah. <laughs> like sweet. yeah. I want to say a title of one of their songs, but all I can think of is "Crab in the Bucket," and that's not one of their songs. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Hey ya, hey ya, be a good you. one. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, I like the way you move. Maybe. Just you if do? we're talking, we're just talking big songs. Uh, see, I'm thinking Chaos, which is like Canadians out Canada's Outcast. Oh, mm. yeah. he has the song "Crabs in the Bucket." Is it anything like "Whiskey in the Jar"? Uh, yes, that's, that's one of our songs. We own Whis that song. Yeah, yeah. Newfoundland specifically owns "Whiskey in the Jar," and we lent it to Metallica. Oh, that's cool. I mean, it's kind of like a traditional folky kind of thing, but yeah. You know. And when it comes to who owns the rights to traditional folk music in North America, it's Newfoundland. Traditional Irish folk music, sorry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
we landed to Boston every now and then. Boston, like the band Boston? No, no, the the, <laughs> the, the, the uh, city. Ah, fair enough. In the state of Massachusetts, is it? Yes, yeah, more like Taxachusetts. <laughs> yes. So yeah, I've noticed a lot of YouTubers are moving to Tennessee. I'm assuming that's because there's no taxes. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm assuming it's because they're like, well, I'm rich and white. What's it matter? Yeah, fair enough. I mean, you know, they're like, I'll probably be insulated from all these terrible things going on right now. I want to help out all those terrible things going on right now. Yes. If only if work. only there was a way that I could increase the consumption base of a of a hellhole. You mean Twitter? I mean all those places. <laughs> it's been the today's the six month anniversary. Oh, of, of the um, Lord and Savior taking over Twitter. Oh, is that right? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I did like. I did like that. Uh, I think it was really good that Jack Dorsey was like, you know what, people. People that don't like the bird site anymore. I need to give them another place to go to. Hey, is, I'm looking for an invitation for that, please. Everybody is. Everybody's yeah. looking for an invitation. I called cool. Jack Dorsey's wife, and she said, "Sorry, <laughs> bud, I'm out <laughs> right now." So it's it's tight. I think you you have to like they're waiting for like the the a lot of people that have brand stuff to settle some land. So we're gonna let them be pioneers, and then then we'll everyone else will get to settle after that. It looks it looks great. I mean, it from just what people have said, it's another thing to check. I want it all, and I want it now. Mm. That's a very of American queen. way of thinking. Yep. Manifest destiny. Yeah, you can't have us. Yeah, you can try. Hey, very, Joe, you're very welcome what's to try. Spider webs on your project there, bud. Yes, these are the, that's the net connections. That's how I see what's that. Connected to please, what. please explain to me like this the where it, like cats cradles, and how does yeah. that ever how does that ever get resolved? Um, it gets resolved by like when I if I take a trace and I run a trace, say I I I can see that this connects to that. So if I connect that trace, it should yeah. resolve that. And then just how the line goes away. Yeah, I did. I did Control Z. There's a there's a line. There was a straight line here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Stop it. I like how you're dropping little tiny traces there (laughs) as you click. Because because it's because it yeah it's it's intuitive in a different way. I'm just having. Yeah, I know this operating system. It's Unix. Sorry, yeah. getting, so getting this the vibe. pin connects to that pin with the red trace. That's, that's right? why I'm holding the mouse like I've never used hands before. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, I understand that that was probably a point in time where a lot of people, stage kids especially, Didn't know they were computer. like, you know, I, you know, I would have played with a computer, but instead I'm, you know, I'm, I'm taking an improv money. class at the Learning Annex. Instead, jazz hands! I'm making um, my parents some money. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, uh, like I was saying, let's let's answer Ron's question. So I've connected this pin here, if you can see that, to this pin right here with the red trace. Now I'm going to control Z and make it go away. If okay. you look carefully, you'll see a blue line show back up between these two pins. Okay, I'm ready to watch. Yeah. Oh, I saw it, Joe. I saw it that time. Right. So, so now, you know, Joe, I... can you make this do that automatically, or do you have to do it for every like trace? Oh, you can do it. You can do it automatically. There's an auto routing feature. I just, okay. I'm just playing around with the layout to yeah. kind of get things near where they're supposed to be, right. um, on the correct sides of the board and all of that stuff. Yeah. Uh, so that the auto routing isn't like, "Hi, I'm running this trace to Mars." Um. So yeah. Why do you need 1.7 kilometers of copper trace? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> or, or like. A... <laughs> Uh, oh my gosh! Hold on. It's a lot of build up for a joke, Ron. It better be good. Well, hold on, but I gotta I gotta say it exactly right, or otherwise, <laughs> um, Joe um, Joe will not appreciate it. It's like, <clears throat> what do cats need with that much yarn and cobalt? I don't get the joke. It's it's from that darn cats, you remember? Because they put that that wire down into the Earth's core, and like 
basically flip the rotation of the earth it's 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 like a season seven episode of futurama yes i haven't seen past the uh past season four oh i haven't seen any of the i keep forgetting stuff. what a terrible human being you are <laughs> you should watch yes. it I, actually and i will tell you the the movie stuff is kind of meh i don't know um because there's not a lot of payoff with that actually there's one joke uh in one of the later seasons about the movie era mm -hmm. and it's just you see it in a fast forward sequence like where like fry and and them are like moving forward through time really really fast and it shows some clips of futurama as they kind of go through and they show some little things from the movies but nothing that matters so um, why did this line move? why why did line move the the later seasons are great joe and you should watch them they're on they're on the hulus uh, that would require me to have a hulu account well, it's, I'm sure that they are conceivably on somebody's Plex server somewhere. I would require <laughs> Not saying they're on my Plex server, but they're on my data. Plex server. And your point is? <laughs> hey, Javier. Yes, sir. Hey, Love Amy. <laughs> hey, Taylor. Hey, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Okay. Right. Yeah, I say the same. Oh. <laughs> you know what? I, I'm I'm designing some things. Let me let me show you one thing that I'm gonna do. Let's see what you think about this idea, guys. Okay. So, uh, where's my screen? Here's my screen. Do you see it? Yeah. Oh, Javier, you can't invade Russia in the winter. That just it doesn't work. Okay. <laughs> this is this has just been figured out. You would just have heck? to take my word. Why? Here. Why? I try. Weird things. So oh, remember God. this one. This one's the whatever it's called. Yeah, the Apple uh, Jonathan yeah. concept. Yeah. So I remember I did this, and I was like, eh, "It's okay, cool, all that." Then I figured, you know, I got a couple of um, little NAS uh, drives in my in my you know my home server. Yeah, and they're just you know Raspberry Pi with, with drives. So, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna print this out, and my NAS is gonna be a Jonathan. That's oh, yeah. cool. <laughs> I like that. You know, I'm gonna That's put sweet. it in there. Then there's this base, and then the base have holes. And then the whole this is gonna just snap in, and I'm gonna put in here a, a Raspberry Pi, and the next one an SS, SS, SSD drive, yeah, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be expandable. Nice. Oh, just like you just launched the uh, <laughs> I like it. You know, you just connect them together, just like exactly, the Jonathan. just match it like the Jonathan. And I like it. I like it. So, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna. I, I think I'm going to just leave it open in the back because it, I don't know how the connections can, are going to be. Hopefully, yeah. it's just one USB. And also, I need it to be, you know, to get air. So, actually, these are open on top. And I may put just like a, a, a fan in the back to take out the, the heat. But it's going to be a battery pie. Room and service. then drives. It's cool, isn't it? I like it. So I, I may do like three or four and put them in, in line. So they look like a Jonathan, but they're really, you know, useful. I like it. <laughs> they're like a Jonathan, but useful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like it. That's cool, isn't it? Here, let's do a shared layout for a little while. Just for a little while. Just for a bit. So, Frodo, you were asking me something, or you just lost your mind? Did I? I don't remember. <laughs> Got that stuck in my head now. It's all your fault. What? Whiskey in the jar. Oh, well, you don't have to. You can just stop thinking about it any time. You should yeah. have some whiskey in the glass instead. That's not how brains work. At least not it is. You just replace the one thing with something else. Use so you establish a clear song, and then when something gets stuck, you just think about the other thing, and it dislodges the first thing. 
that's not how my brain works. It, it's I we share a very similar brain. No. And it is. It no. will work if you will it if you have the strength of will, Joe, to make it work. <laughs> the strength of will. You can do it. Strength no. of will. This isn't no. My brain. Yeah, because it's my and I, I only listen I don't listen to the other song because it's the clear song. It can only exist for one purpose, and that is to dislodge other things. Just so it's to the happy, happy, joy, joy song. Intrusive thought oh God, no. gets dislodged by the clear song. Probably want to start with the power rails because then that'll get rid of a lot of the weird questioning lines. Also, I have to figure out the distance that th this these actual holes, the mount holes for these are from those. So I should probably go look up the data sheet of the part that I'm using. Okay, sure. Sounds right. <laughs> That's Joe. <laughs> that, that that is Joe. Look, it focused on it that time. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. No. This is a song about being happy. That's right. This is a song about a whale. Joy, joy song. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Javier, copyright. Ooh. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, it was le less than ten seconds. Hopefully. Yeah, we're okay. Just yeah, we, I don't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Sorry. So we can't play the happy little life form song. Life forms. Yeah. <laughs> the tiny little life, life finds form. a way. Do 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 do. Do do part. Cool. So this is what I need. So I need to know the distance, the measuring distance between. Here we go. Hmm. Bottom entry. 3.81 millimeters. Sounds right. Three point eight divided by point two five four. Nope. Point one times point five four. Uh huh. One point one five times three point eight. Yeah, three point eight one. Yep, exactly. So it's one, it's one and a half. Okay. So three point eight one is our is our measurement. Okay. So this needs to be exactly 3.81 center to center. So we, let's get a line and do a line, a line, a line. There we go. Mm -hmm. You put the lime in the coconut. Joe, we'll fix it in post. You're fine. <laughs> uh, plus 3.8. Boop. You are twenty five four eight five four. Twenty five four eight five four. That's not how, why. Wait, what? What? Did I do it wrong? Control C. I want your X position to be dead centered on that. And we do that minus 3.81. Great. Now it's centered. 
So now I can center this on this thing whose position is exactly that. So then I can set your position to uh, can we do that there? Perfect. Perfection. Don't you have a footprint already for that? No. This is a very, very, very weird part. Uh, Francois. Um, it's a how can I explain it? These these through hole badooby doos are just they're the dumbest things ever. They're just stupid. They're weird bottom entry connected doodles, and there's the pins here are standard point uh, two point five four apart or point one inch. Um, so that's what I'm using as my reference. Can I get a, can I download a, a library thing for it? Probably CAD models, probably. Sounds right. About right. Like I don't, yeah. And then look, <laughs> 404. <laughs> nope. <laughs> so we're, we're doing it live. <laughs> but that's fine. I mean, again, we're talking about like, if we're off by like a hundredth of a millimeter, that's called tolerance. And I'm not too worried. Yeah, I, I'm not a professional. I just play one on, on the internet, so... Yeah. So, you're 23.2156. The Y of 60... Let's, let's set the Y first. So, the Y is the same, and this is then this would be that one and we do this plus 3.81 there we go cool and so then we can set the the y of this to the same as the y of this thing which would be that so it should be aligned and then the x is going to be whatever this is Those are aligned now. Great. Cool. So now we've got that aligned. Yay! Or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Something. It looks great, so, Joe. I, I hope so. Or something. Yeah, or something. Um, I want to look at the schematic. Yeah, because that's a ground pin. That's also a ground pin. So we can basically pull that whole, whole thing. What is this? That doesn't need to be there. Ow. What's pin one? It's also a ground. Oh, okay. That makes sense. So that does need to be there. Stand by. Boop. And boop. there we go. Save. Yay. Now, if I do update, is it going to break my design? Nope, it just added extra connections. Good. Sweet. Yay. Cool. So now, the ground plane of this just kind of runs along the bottom for the most part. Yeah. Hmm. And then it uses it uses these big chonker like metal things as as power planes, which is the dumbest idea ever. I don't know who designed this board. These boards, they're stupid. So let's. Um, we need a big ground plane, huh? This is ground. See, it says gund, gund, gund. Um. Data buses. Can I update this and call this control buses? Oh yeah, do this control buses. Let's do that so it says the right thing. Control bus. Sure. That way it'll match over here. 
update. Yay, it's updated. Let's let's run a ground plane. Let's do it. I don't remember how. <laughs> Add a filled zone. I don't know. The ground plane needs to be on the bottom copper, sure. Uh, I can actually pick a net that it connects to, really. Very weird. Cool. Pardon. Can I like view this in three D? Doesn't Kai Cat have like a three D viewer thing a doodle? Yeah, it was like you can um <clears throat> turn it into a a three D thing. That's what I just said. <laughs> um, if you go up to the top, it's um, 3D. Or, yeah. There you go. I'd keep it just like that, Joe. Like those two sockets that are just floating out in space. Kind of floating in, in space. Yeah. I, it's, that's how I do it. Is That's how you roll? Yep. Hey, look, that filled area didn't fill in. Mm -mm. Nice. Here is not. I also love how the holes didn't show up in the board that I wanted there. Like I want to, I want to move, move board left. Really, that's that's how you do it. This 3D yeah, yeah. modeler is awful. It is awful. Okay. Circuit sculpture challenge at Hackaday. Mohit Boyt is going to win that, Francois. I'm sorry. He will destroy the all of you. Have you guys followed him? I don't know exactly how to pronounce his name. I follow him on Instagram. He makes these little sculptures out of brass wire and raw components. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Like he's he he, he is a god among men. We cool. So, yeah, we're just going to close that. I don't know how this works. So we're going to just make a trace. Big fat one. Um, how do you make traces bigger? I don't remember. Happy, happy, joy. Half of me wants to just design this in sprint layout because I think it'll happen faster. That's the old like, Joe. He's dead this. now. Net. See, look, it connected to the net. Uh, uh, one millimeter. Big, fat, chonker trace. Chunky. Yes. <laughs> why did it... Why, what is What is this... What it? What the hell? Okay. Oh my goodness gracious! No idea what that was. Um, the horror. So as crazy as it sounds, I just pulled the case off of the original Mac Two power supply. Yeah, and everything That's including the re everything including the reef is actually looks good. So I'm thinking it's due to the onboard batteries. Because on the Mac Twos. The white pin on this cable for the power supply is the battery signal to turn on the power supply. So I think I'm going to hotwire it with another battery to see if it kicks it on. Neat. It'll either work or it won't. Exactly. Um, I'm willing to bet those, those two batteries look original. So I'm thinking they are dead, extremely dead. So that's not the one I would very most extremely dead. Well, the computer is as old as I am. It came out in 87. Isn't that adorable, guys, how young he is? Uh, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Adorable. It's adorable. 
I'm assuming <laughs> the, money, the, the batteries are most definitely dead. Because then we can do this. Uh, mirror. Apparently it's not going to do that. R, R. Move. Because then those make sense like this. Now do I have a good battery? That's the next thing. I do have a benchtop power supply, so I can always simulate a battery. Cool, that works. So we got those connected, dude. <laughs> So what connects to that data bus? Yeah. What those those resistors? So and I don't think I need those. So you know it's old when the battery itself says made in West Germany. Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah. When you gotta specify a Germany, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where are those resistors? That's hilarious. Where do they exist on schematic? Shh. Schematic. Schematic. Skimbidim. Here it is. They exist right here, and they don't need to. These do not need to exist. They are a figment of your imagination. That was not how I wanted that to happen. Okay. Now, let's drag. Boop. 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 As we're going directly into another... We're going into not a memory. We don't need all those resistors. So we save this and then we update a doodle. It. Update pickaboo. Delete footprints with no symbols. Update. Boop. There we go. Cool. So that's done. So that gets rid of all that junk. Where is R2? D2! Haha! -ha! Oh, it's these, these. I don't need those either. No need. Save. And update it again. Update. Yay! All removed. All those components we don't need. I do need to add some ca cappy sitters, but. No, I thought this was a vintage space. Where's your big draft ta table with mylar sheets so you can prep your circuit on a big drawing destined to be photo a photograph negative? Um, that is Logan. Our friend Logan is doing that for an Apple Apple One or Apple Two clone because he's mm -hmm. insane and I love it. But I'm not that crazy, so I'm Logan's not doing crazy. What is R four? Where is resistor four? That's this that that's that pull up resistor to five volts. That's it's like cool. this is like that. Yep. Boop 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 do do doop boop do do doop. Okay. Now let's find a battery. So this goes let's see if we have a working battery. Where AR7 is an input over here. Yeah, it's pin 24, so that should just be all the way over there. Those old batteries were 3.6 volts too, right? The original ones? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Sure. There we go. Oh. Hope if I switched it to DC voltage. There we go. Hold it that way, because then it'll go to 5 volts, which is up there. Yeah, but it just goes to a ground plane. So we're just, we'll mm -hmm. just kind of stick it here. Kind of in that general vicinity. Sure. We should probably put these two RAM chips side by side in the middle of the board, maybe. Like dead center. Let's make it look pretty. Yeah, we should go for pretty, not accurate. I mean, when you look at it, though, it 
kind of wants to be here. Like that. Because then you've got the left righty, lefty righty doodlies. Yeah. Wow. There you go. It is dinner time. I'm going to run to dinner. Okay. Good to see you. Thanks for stopping by, Ron. Yep. Thanks see for you being guys a friend. little later. You go, Ron. You go. Yep. yep. Talk to you in a bit. Bye. 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 Thank God he's. Oh, wait. No. That's his. Oh, That's boy. <laughs> Who was that guy? An annoying one. An annoying one. <laughs> uh, what am I looking for? Hope. Yes, <laughs> I definitely am. Okay. So we're gonna rig up a battery. Move. Do what? 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 What did I do? View layers. Layer view. Preset all layers. I have no idea what happened to my view and why footprints went away. Normal. There we go. Don't press G while doing layer design. This is the most boring stream ever. <laughs> well, no, because I'm here. Oh, that's right. Javier's here. Javier Javier's here today. to turkey this. You know? set, quick, Javier, set something on fire. <laughs> Don't tempt me. <laughs> that's my specialty. I did it again. Normal. Move. Yeah, this wants to be down here, right? You want to be here. You want to be up here. Just he. You want to be here and you want to be there. Like that. Sure. You Why has no one made an ad lib for the Apple III? Why do you, you don't need an ad lib for the Apple III. You get like the mockingboard and stuff. Yep. There we go. Diddly do. Cool. Diddly do. Diddly do. Where where should this go? This kind of just needs to be generally like it because it talks to both of those. We don't want those crossing, so we're just gonna kind of shove them there. Uh, these are the data inputs. Yes, they are, and they want to be. It wants to be rotated that way. It prefers that. First, that to be that direction. Yep. This is like that. Now, those are backwards from the standard, but maybe they'll maybe they'll work better this way. Kinda. Kinda. Where do you feel like living? You probably need to like be up here or some, something like that. You. I did it again. I keep hitting G instead of M. You it's probably. It's a G thing. Why is that connected all the way over there? Yeah, you should probably be like in here. Jiminy Christmas! Stop doing it, Joseph! There we go. And then you should kind of, yeah, just leave it here. Sure. There! It's laid out, or something. By the way, are you sure the holes are large enough for the pins on the Molex? No. Oh, oh really. that worked. What worked? What'd you do? The Mac 2 lives. I took my bench power supply, rigged up some wires, and touched it to the terminal. And look at that. It on. It's angry, but it boots. I know! I have video. Josh is here. Hi, Josh. How you doing? Hang on. Let me try and reset the PRAM. Why has no one made DOSBox for Apple II? 
<laughs> Actually, uh, it was last year or the year before. I think it might have been Charles Mangin. He made an 8086 emulator for the Apple IIe. Crap. Yeah. And it ran. DOS. Char- Charles Mangin. Very slowly. <laughs> so it's it's extremely difficult to touch it's this hilarious. Here while trying to reset the PRAM. <laughs> oh, man. Let me see. So I got to put a wire to the shielding. The ground to the shielding. And then the red to this power supply wire. But I also want to try and reset the PRAM. Frank, we can't see what you're doing. You got a camera over there? No, not one that works. I got a oh, I have a, oops, I have a chip up here. Useless. <laughs> I want to be over here. Well, it's, it's definitely the uh, onboard batteries are crap. Prefers to kind of be the mischief right center of this. Okay, so let's figure out here what we can do with this. So there's a chance for Windows 3.1 on the Apple II. One frame per year. Hold on, I want to log solitaire. Um, See you in the fall. That's like trying to play a game on an Etch a Sketch. Yes. I, I demand it, it be done. Do it. Um, let's go back to the data sheet for this. Uh, the diameter of the actual pinholes is. Oh, there we go. Booting. Yay! Nice what do you did? So I took out some of the extra RAM. Too much RAM. Gotcha. Too much RAM. So I just touched the jumper wires off of it again, and it, it's booting from the blue SCSI. Bottom entry. This is our thing. Noise. Here is what so I just need to get for. a couple battery replacements for the board, and the Mac 2 is working. The original Mac 2. The OG? Yeah. This thing is ginormous. Compared to the other Mac 2s, like this thing is like twice the width. Yep. Okay. So much with. So good. What are good resources for troubleshooting a memory board issue on an XLESA? Remove every RAM chip from it, put it in another machine that's compatible with it, and run a RAM test. <laughs> Take your Lisa, box it up, and send it to me. That's right. Okay, so I, I've got it running in 16 colors. That's it. Yay! So that's where. Frank did something today, folks. I know, right? Yay. Uh... It wouldn't be a Joe stream if, if, if it wasn't like. Boring as hell, except for Frank doing stuff. So let's yeah. test, let's ambitious but rubbish. Let's boot up Jared. Let's boot up Jared and see if he sings. <laughs> Here we go. Is Jared? Jared, like oh. the the pervy subway guy? No. Here he goes. <laughs> no, the diamond place. Is Jared? Oh, Jared. Yeah, gotcha. he's singing. <laughs> And if Joe's anybody... demonetized. <laughs> yeah. If anybody ha- knows how to like find on this stupid schematic where the, the dimension of these pins are, that'd be great. Yeah. Good luck. Now, granted, I have some of these pins inbound, so I'm going to be able to just physically look at them before I actually buy these these circuit boards. But that's about... <sighs> hey, it boots. It's got video. Man, a oh man. Like it doesn't show the diameter of the pin. Somebody's really the happy. Yeah, They're awesome. very happy, uh, Frank. Yeah. I it's would. Not very often something actually works. <laughs> Without Poor having Frank. to boatload more money trying to figure out why. Almost never Dang happens it, to me. I <laughs> just say, you know, I just um, unload money. Plus or minus one. You got to um, take the win where you can get it. Yep. I agree. Totally agree. I'm going to try this right here. Ah, oh, this. That's that di- no. This is the diameter of the large hole that it receives the pin from the underside. One point zero seven. Where do you see that, sir? Oh. Try turning it off and turning it back on. No, it's just that ram. It just doesn't like that extra ram. I was talking to Joe, but okay. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were asking why it was complaining. 
complain, complain, complain. Probably bad resistors on these. Oh, right here. I see it right here. I think this is what you're talking about. I got more RAM. Some oh, right here. It doesn't show that specifically on the the bottom entry one though. I'm, I would assume it would be the same diameter, but yeah. Assumptions are not good. Okay. Well, let's, it's 1.07, so let's do that. So are these 1.07 or larger? Diameter. Diameter. The, the pad shape. You figure I could just do this and like it would tell me. Yeah, you're a big disappointment. <laughs> Can confirm. <laughs> what? Who's a big disappointment? Yeah. Me? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it's it's Frodo uh, for the Frank's legs. Huge disappointment. Oh. Look at those things. <laughs> like two little two little sticks. Oh, oh Lord! <laughs> where, 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 where diameter? You use that application every day, and look, can't find it. Sheesh. One point seven, right here. Here it is, right here. Well, that's oh, the. Is that the outer diameter, though? It was hiding in plain sight. Right in the open your eyes. You say it was one point oh seven, not one point seven. Who's <laughs> doing that? Is that you? Is that you, Ryan? Okay. Yeah. System. System. I filled all the RAM slots and it's booted. <laughs> we put that light switch in for G to turn the light switch on and off, not have disco dance raves. How do I change the the via hold that that's like how like i can get the pad sh the pad hole shape diameter right here it's right here it's right there it's right in front of my face can you diameter. see diameter <laughs> diameter 1.27 no see, the problem is, see the problem is it's, it says seven. meter in it and joe's american and doesn't that's understand right. the metric system morrigan morrigan we say do this. If that had said dia inch, would be totally okay. Dia inch. <laughs> or dia yard. <laughs> feet. Feet? Sure, dia feet. We use cubits. Cubits? Cubits. 14 <laughs> rods to the hog's head, and that's the way I like it. Cubits. <laughs> giraffe. Uh... NASA only uses giraffes, okay? Yeah. Cubits and hobbits. Dia furlon. <laughs> Eric, what do you, what is this? Anybody know? A dire furlong. It should be long, like a furlong, like a a measurement of depth. Ah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> banana Dino. for scale. Banana. <laughs> okay, Linus, calm down there. Um, I want to edit the diameter of all of these at once. Copy You're asking for too much. Is this a free program? Or do you have to pay for it? Free. Okay. Wow. Open source. <laughs> Communism again. The worst. Open source is the worst because everybody does whatever they want. Mm -hmm. they no, don't it's follow, not that bad. They don't follow any con conventions. No, no, of course. We do as we like, want. Why, 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 why not select? Well, select all of them, but the, the square one on the top, isn't it? Because the square one, I'm, but I'm trying to like sometimes, like I'll do this, and sometimes it'll select the pads, but sometimes it'll, oh, it'll, God. it'll like select like nothing. There oh, we go. Goodness. That is the whole thing. <laughs> you gotta say, Doug Nabbit. I can go and edit the master footprint. 
Saving will update the board only. Perfect. Select in KiCad is dependent on the direction of the you drag your mouse and it. That is stupid. No, oh, that is no. asinine. <laughs> what Linux developer who only uses GUIs to harm people designed that? Thank you. That's exactly why I hate Linux. Oh, calm down. Slow your roll. <laughs> um, just no over here on the Vintage Apple uh, Macintosh Enthusiast Facebook page, mm -hmm. and someone posted a an ad for a very rare classic piece of history. The Macintosh SE is a personal computer designed, oh. and then it says the price of $6,500. Are you wow. kidding? That cheap? The price? The SE you... sitting on the See? floor there was less than 100 bucks ship. And exactly. It it boots fine. <laughs> by that, by that logic, everybody in this chat has a 401k in their basement. Hell yeah! <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> or as we call it in Canada, an RRSP. But yes. Uh, oh, anger, anger, anger. <laughs> What's wrong, Joe? I'm trying to select just the circles. I don't control, want to edit the whole footprint. Control click. I'm going to. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I can like do that. And then when I double click, it just selects the one I double click. On. What if you right click on them? Uh, I don't know. I didn't read the whole menu because I got. Is there like stuff. edit there somewhere? No. If the rectangle was drawn from the right to the left, all objects being inside or being intersected by the re rectangle are selected. Hmm. That, why, why? Waka, waka, waka. Welcome to TyCad. TyCad? Ty is this what this is? Kick I don't it. Know. Kick it. Google KiCad edit multiple pads. Yeah, but like, Kick it. Googling is for like, like, people who are smart, and I'm not smart. TyCad, where the rules are made up and the points don't matter. Yes. Where the hell am I going? But I mean, realistically, the next best piece of software is like, what, SolidWorks? And you're going to throw down huh. four or five grand? Or, yeah, or you know, literally AutoCAD or something like that. Yeah. Again, you're going to throw down four or five grand? And still, well, you're going to have a lot of issues. Yeah. Hey, the... Uh... The round batteries that Ron's board uses, do you know what battery itself it is? It's a 2032, isn't it? Yeah, something like that. Or 2016, one of the two. If only Ron wasn't eating and was here to tell us. Jesus. Ron. Apparently, Eric says he has about $20,000 worth of SEs. <laughs> That's some solid investment, sir. Same here. Well, I got... Okay. I got... I got I got a green one that is like oh, $10,000. Yeah. And then the clear one that is like $1,500. Speaking of clear things, Javier, how goes the clear Apple II floppy case? Yes, we need to hear about this. I haven't seen an update in a while. Oh, my goodness gracious. Don't even start me there. So uh, basically, my bank is giving me some crap because the registration with my of my LLC has some issues. So I cannot open the bank account, basically. So we, I, I'm going to have to go next week to the bank and talk to them. If only you knew somebody who lived in the Cayman Islands and you could circumvent most of this problem. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Yay, did you see that? Maybe, yeah, or or in Panama. Mm. Ultium Designer is only $460 per month. What? So now what's the issue with your thing? What are they saying about your LLC that's bad? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm it's some accounting stuff that you know. There you go. That's I, I, I mean, that's why I'm a graphic designer, not a, an accountant. So of course. that's why I have I design things. I don't these bureaucrats. <laughs> but I'll, 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 I was trying to make it work. You know, go live for April second, and look, it's March already. So. May, you mean? Oh, May, I'm sorry. So, uh, so I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll pesky I'll say, and... the love of God, have here. Do not go backwards in time. Hey, I I'm need to see you. the sun. I need spring and what summer to get here. Time. 
Well, it's going to be a short run anyway. It's going to be 75. How is that the default pad properties? What was it you were making? 75. This. No, what was it? Oh, the front, uh, clear K, clear front for a Apple II floppy drive. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw them, him demo that. That was yeah, pretty nice. Go. Yeah, I like that. So you're happy with the, that? that's a, um, a what's it called, right? The, it's not 3D pad. printed, it's... Um, is resin printed. Resin printed. Ah, yeah. There you go. Yep. yep. I figured it out, guys. So you edit one to the way you want to do it. That's pretty uh -huh. nice. Then you right click and say push pad properties to other pads. Ah, there you and go. And then you just hit change pads on current footprint and boom, it does them all. Cool. Awesome. Boom. It's like the highlight thing. You know, and then set it. And I can also like do this and do like push pad properties to uh, other pads. And then I can also select change pads on identical footprints and it would do it for all of them on the entire board. Cool. Who did he do? Awesome. Who is your dad and what does he do? Who is your daddy? My dad's a gynecologist. <laughs> <laughs> Great movie. Yeah, take a look under the hood. Neat. Is that what the gynecologist said, or is that what the mechanic said? Both. <laughs> yeah, both. Um, tool. Route. Tools. Oh, boy. Interesting. Where's the auto router? Huh. So this, produces a, so this produces a file that you then send to someone like PCBWay or the other people? Yes. Okay. ECB way. ECB way. ECB way. Gerbers. You go export or uh, fabrication outputs, Gerbers, cool. and then fabrication cool. drill files. Okay. These are the, all of the lines and shapes and paths and cuts and all that stuff. Right. And drill files is the drill files, is where so all the holes are. You're getting the boards printed and assembled or just printed? Uh, probably just printed because it's through rule stuff. What is cool. this PCB for? It's for an Apple III, Jeremy. This is an Apple III replacement memory board. Unless it does it now, yes. KiCat has no auto router. I was pretty sure it had an auto router, but I guess it doesn't. KiCat auto router. It's always a YouTube video. Hmm. You can install job in a plugin. You can install these in a package. Simply export it to some plus. Yeah, you like can okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Made easy. Yeah. Made yeah. Well, I'm not going to do that tonight. <laughs> no, I'm not going to do that tonight. Yeah. We've done enough work on it tonight. Well, actually, before I get it routed or anything like that, or actually do anything like that, I'll probably order a small set of these boards the smallest set i can just for fitment testing so yeah. i can actually build one with the the to make sure the shape is the right shape and also to make sure that that is aligned correctly but yeah so there's no other fun features that you're putting on this it's just the, nope. the placement memory what about cad <laughs> clock card what's going on with you why is, there not a, why is there not a blue scuzzy like bolted to the side of it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Actually, yeah, let's talk about some of my other cool stuff. Um, stand by. Let's like get rid of that. Do it. Um, I'm doing lots of cool stuff uh, for the Apple 3 and the Apple 2. So I'm doing the, the, the RAM board for the Apple 3. Um, I'm designing. Can, do I have one on my bench? Frank, what's uh, that pizza box shaped so, computer on the floor? Here you go. That's fine. I'm designing these, which which I showed that, which is yeah. oh, this, oh, yeah. this here. Really cool. Oh, okay. It's the cover. The thing is ginormous. What what's what's big? What? He asked what the pizza box shaped computer was on the floor. I said that's the cover for the Mac too. It's ginormous. Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's a big and board. why do you have a uh, big plotter in your room? I use it to print uh, drawings out. Ooh. He charges dollars. Yeah. 
Cool. I know I have to I have to print them for some of the corporate customers that we have. They have maps of where the pest devices are in their facility. So we take their blueprints and we plot them on, and then we print out physical maps that they keep on site. Yeah, they need them for some like certifications, don't they? Like yeah, so the auditors, the auditors look at them. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I mean, I've got some here. I'll... Well, I don't know if I could show it. Yeah, I can show, really nice. show you off stream, but uh, yeah, fair it's probably not a good idea to show you on stream. Do, do you have the layout for the bank that you do? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we keep engineering drawings for a I'm lot. I'm interested in the underground. Yeah, yeah, the vault. How many how many mouse traps yeah. are in the vault? Yeah. <laughs> we keep a lot of Just curiosity. You know me. And yeah. what's the code to get in? So I know when I get in there, I don't trip on them. What's one of the right. funniest? So we do some banks and stuff, but one of the funniest things is, is like when you do pest control, nobody asks you anything. You just walk in, you say hi, and then you go anywhere you want. Restricted areas, not restricted areas, nobody cares. You know, a, a hard asks. hat, a clipboard, and a high visibility jacket. Oh yeah, you can go anywhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. most people tend to not ask questions. Yep. Um, speaking of blue scuzzy. I have a, a weird idea. I'm going to throw it out to you guys. So imagine an Apple II GS, or maybe even just an Apple IIe or something. If you will. Okay. That. How are, how are the crazy. capacitors on it? Is it bad? No, they're fine. They're fine. Okay. I'm imagining it in no. my head. Um, no, but if you want a bad Apple II GS. Is that uh, that? The one that uh, there, there you go. It, it's it's destroyed. It's it's mm, mm. tasty. Look at the that's rust. Rust. Oh, Eat that's it. Great. Eat it. Um, but no, seriously. So imagine an Apple II GS. Um, and you want a you want a storage solution for your Apple II GS, and you want it to be inexpensive and more rely or more accessible than any other solution out there. So, what are your options for? Storage for the Apple II GS. Why don't you throw me some throw me some names, Javier? CFFA. Yeah. Um, that drive weird drive from Reactive Micro. Mm -hmm. The Micro Drive Turbo. Yeah, that one. The, I've got the SCSI card with the blue SCSI on it. I, yeah, you can discuss you yeah. and a SCSI card is really expensive. So raw, raw SCSI? Mm -hmm. Does does it does it do that? Well, no. It technically work. speaking, if you have the SCSI card, sure. Yeah, sure. exactly. And then Apple we got the W drive and the the MU, the floppy MU. Floppy MU, yeah, would be mine. And then there's this new card that is coming out that never have come out yet, but it's supposed to be real fast. What is it called? The one that I I tested like a year ago. Mm -hmm. So yeah, those are the the options. Yeah. So, so imagine you had disc. a yeah. oh a booty, but booty is a goner. Yeah. Booty's not around anymore. Floppy EMU. Yeah. yeah. That's pretty much it. Universal, reliable, slow as yep. slow things. Would a GoTech work? Probably not. No. No. GoTech doesn't work. No. no. Now, think about this. Mm -hmm. Think about a card you put in your Apple II GS that has a Raspberry Pi Pico attached to it, an SD card slot, and some software, and a Guzzy controller chip. All on one card. What do you think? What do you think about that? I think you're crazy. Does it come with a Fujinet type device where I can get on the internet? Ooh. No. However, it could it. the Raspberry Pi Pico has this version called the Raspberry Pi Pico Toby. W. Exactly. That has some extra features in it. Yeah, it does. So, so you could theoretically create the web interface where you can put your disk files so you don't have to keep taking the SD card in and out. That's right. useful. A little server. You point it, you yep. point it to a web server or something, and it's like here's your files. Yep. And you could just mount the files using an interface on the computer of your choice. Because mm -hmm. think that's about sort of what this does, right? There's a web interface for the I've never used oh, it. Better. Kind of, but it's built in. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. It's just a thought. I like it. Well, what would you call it? Blue Scuzzy, Blue Scuzzy GS or something like that. It'd be a very special version of the Blue Scuzzy. Did you want to borrow my breakout board, Joe? <laughs> what does that break out? The slot on an Apple II or 2G. Oh, no. I mean, not unless you're happening to drop it into a box 
that you're sending me something else in. Well, that, well, I do have to send you the, the power supply for that, for that computer. computer. That's what yeah. I'm doing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if you want to do that, that's fine. So, yeah. I don't. I, I got this from a guy in Ireland. Diddly tea um, potatoes. Yep. Here, here, here's here's the thing: is that the blue SCSI is a well-known device, mm -hmm. and the Apple II SCSI card, not the fast SCSI card, because it doesn't matter, because the Apple II can't move data that fast, freaking fast anyway. That doesn't mm -hmm. matter. But the Apple II SCSI card is also a known design. All I need are the schematics, and I shove them together on one card. Yep. And it's Frank just and one SCSI. card. I like it's a it. single card, right? Call it the wild blue yonder. But what other yep. functions can we add to it? A sailboat. Well, I already have one of those. I don't need another one. Um, I don't know. I mean, we can it, we can make it like a standard SCSI with an external SCSI port, but okay. the, but it wouldn't necessarily need an internal SCSI point port at that point because it would no. just be on the board. Yeah. Right? yeah. It well, you could have a, a SCSI card. port on the back, like a. Yeah. Okay, that's kind of cool. Yeah, and you can just route it to a, one of the little external uh, SD card things, so you can put the, the card in and out. And okay. You know, there's not too many SCSI things that you can connect to an IGS, so. Like Yet. What? Yet. Yeah. <laughs> CD-ROM? Mm. You can. Yeah, but you, you can. Have no here, 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 here's my thought. Here's my thought. It, Blue SCSI now, version 2, supports, well, version 1 does it too, supports CD images. Mm -hmm. right. Why would you need a CD drive? Correct. You don't need one. Mm -hmm. You don't need external. And because, again, there weren't a lot of devices that used SCSI on the GS, you don't even need an external connection. The idea is to just combine the SCSI functionality with the blue SCSI in one unit yeah. as an alternative storage solution for your Apple IIgs. But what if you wanted to hook up a scanner to your Apple IIgs, Joe? You can do that with your SCSI card right now and watch it do nothing. Yeah, I, I have, have, to talk have to a scanner in the other room. What's that? I have an Apple scanner in the other room. One of the big. Do you have the software to make the uh, the two GS actually? Put the no data software in? To probably GS. not. <laughs> yeah, because it doesn't exist. No, probably not. Exactly. That's the thing. You can connect everything, but without software, you yeah. won't be recognized. So maybe <laughs> USB. <laughs> hmm. Francois, write the drivers. I'm like. Yeah, exactly. You know? Yeah. USB wouldn't be bad if it had a USB port. Yeah, it would be nice to have a USB port on the. Compact GS. flash for Apple II, Scott. The CFFA three thousand, Scott. The USB port on it. Yeah, hmm. but it's a one one purpose. I'm I'm talking about. I'm talking what gen, gener, generic USB. Yeah. Why would you use that? that? Then you need how, a driver for that? that. Yeah. I was just thinking for storage. So when you the USB like, is basically a, a serial port, isn't it? Like high speed serial. It is, but it has an underlying communications set. What so What are our options for a modem? To USB, and then it tell that it tells the host. These, this is the kind of device that I am. Right. The host has to know what to you, do with that. You wouldn't use the SCSI port for a modem anyway. No, but what are our options for a modem? You can like do you, modems through the serial ports that are built on already. Uh -huh. Right. But didn't we just talk about how it has a Wi-Fi adapter? Why wouldn't we? Well, you could do Wi-Fi over the uh, uh, internet over the Wi-Fi. Yeah. Like the... You could. You, that would require some driver work to, yeah. to present that as a yeah, the, totally. the so network what, network what is it this this thing does? It has like it creates like a but that's for the Apple, right? The uh, yeah, the, that's the Mac for the Mac. It's for the Mac. It uses mm -hmm. it, it emulates the data port. Data port, that's right. I was trying to remember the and, name. It, yeah. and you use the data port driver and the Mac's like, oh okay. Um if there were a if there's already a device that exists that adds a network card to the Apple II GS over a SCSI port, that would probably be easier to try to emulate that at a software level, right? Um, on the Pico, than it would be to try to like roll your own with drivers, because honestly, the software would be the harder part. Right. Like, who knows how Apple, who GSOS works anymore? It's not well, as so, well documented as Mac OS. What are they doing for the food? Because the Fuji works in the two GS, doesn't it? It does, but they have a team of like a hundred crazy people, and I say that with love. <laughs> right, yeah, they're yeah. doing God's work. They are doing God's um, work. Uh, they just like just massive sets of volunteers who happen to know their platform, who I are like who added a stack to do, to the to the Apple to do that. I, well, love I don't think they've added GS specific support yet. Yeah, have I they? 
Javier's uh, review of the uh, Fuji net. Huh, the damn thing doesn't work. <laughs> Yeah, it's still nah, no, no. I, I think they're still I think they're still working on signaling. I love Fuji, FujiNet. They they have very good the thing is that yeah, they, they are doing too many things. No, no, point. your your video while you were testing it trying to figure oh, it out. Yeah, it, yeah. Huh, the damn thing doesn't work. I just thought it was hilarious. I'm and I, I, I had a little discussion with, with Jerry Holmes uh, on the interface and, and he was like kind of annoyed by it. It's it's the truth, you know. You yeah, but it's not so way of saying it. It's very different. Yeah. So. It, it, it wasn't and, self-explanatory. Once you explained when you figured it out. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It sense, but looking at it like you did with you, it didn't make sense either. It makes yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah. What if we added I mean, a... Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was going to say, again, they're also like, they're trying to like build out this network of everything talking right. to everything. Right. And so the technical part is, is they're really trying to hammer out the technical part. Sure. And the... It's a lot of pieces. The... the, the oh, no, documentation side isn't as they're, yeah. they're juggling no. chainsaws and yeah the floor is slippery yeah that's yeah, a lot of pieces yep. yep. make yep. work so but um six months from now a year from now this could be a completely different conversation yeah yeah, yeah. and it's got a lot of potential oh yeah one of the the challenges on the apple II side that i've i've heard of and I, just from knowing how the apple II's work is the smart sport port support like smart port on a 2e using like a Lyron card or some or the Yellowstone compared to smart port on a two plus or a 2c plus compared to smart port on a GS, they're all just slightly different. They're just slightly different. And so you have to design a protocol that knows how to deal with that. Apple right. managed to make it work and they're like, oh, just shove it in there, it'll work. It'll be fine. Um, <laughs> but Quinn Dunkey, I think, was it, not had some problems figuring out some smart port stuff. And then Steve Chamberlain as well, when he was designing the floppy EMU to do uh, smart ports. Yeah. That's why he, his card is not that good, you know? Yeah. Not, no, and no. not, not, and not specifically on the Yellowstone side, but when he was designing the floppy EMU, yeah. he was having problems. Well, it works in smart port on the, on the two C, but I move it to do GS and it's like <laughs> error. <laughs> and so it's just like the timing is like, it's got these weird, like variable windows and so, like, yeah, it's so it's not straightforward. Yeah. Phil philosophical question for you guys. Do you think now is the time to do this because the people that know this stuff are, you know, getting long in the tooth, we'll say they're, you know, and do you think that'll always be like that? Do you think there will always be that sort of catching up wave of retro people trying to get as much stuff they can get before well, people disappear? I have a theory on that. And most of the people that you see do development on this stuff that have the time to do it are older because they're retired. Right. The time. Yeah, time. You don't get a ton of people like Joe who's still working and developing things, you know, yeah. or Eric that does the same thing, working and developing things. <laughs> uh, you don't have a ton of that because a lot of, uh, you know, you're spending money out of your own pocket and your own time to do it. Right. You but know, now but the fact that retirement is a myth and will no longer be a thing, for the majority of us young people, oh, likely, yeah. um, is that going to change? This is my retirement. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> yeah, four hundred one k. Well, that, that, that's the million dollar question, though, because if you think about it, like nobody in nineteen eighty seven when they made that Mac two had any damn clue that it would even be used today. Yeah. Right. Not a not a, any idea that anybody would be but, using. It today. But are we are we going to have the foresight to make the, the same mistake? Or make that the same, you know, say, okay, well, we start taking some new modern stuff and put it away and also take some of the knowledge and put it away so that we, it's available. Sure. I well, feel like it's easier now with the internet. But you know, that, because... that's like the same thing is like with people, especially in the hobby, they, there's a niche thing that you like to do right. and everything else. And eh, I don't really care. So like for me, you know, I like the older Apple and the older Mac stuff, you know, like the 68 K stuff. I don't really care about the G4s, G5s, or anything newer than that. I can care yeah. less. Yeah. See, I'm the opposite. I just love it all. When it gets to our point, <laughs> and people are our age later, you know, they'll probably be looking at the G4, G5s, and stuff as we're doing original stuff now. Right. So it, it's a weird, weird situation. You know, I, I don't know. It's a million dollar question. But you know, I look at like we this if, past. If weekend, I have the answer, do I get the million dollars? <laughs> But it's, see, it's a million, it's a million dollars in Apple twos, and you have to get them from Adam's basement. See, like really, that's our thing yeah. now that we need to figure out as a as a way to remake the cases so that they last. 
Yeah. As brittle as it is now in 30 years, my God, you just touch the thing, it's going to fall apart. But yeah. see, it's funny Tom says that because, you know, I look at cars, for example. Mm-hmm. 50 years ago, nobody went, you know what's going to be great in the future? The Volkswagen yeah. Beetle. People were like, yeah. this thing's terrible. Oh, yeah. But we're going to drive it because it's the only thing we got. And yeah. then we're going to throw it out. And then in 50 years, we're going to be like, oh, all glass eyed and rose colored glasses, nostalgic about the old Volkswagen. You know, well, we look should at get the- one again. Look at the people with the Land Rover Discoveries, how much those things go for. Exactly. It's another thing. You know, people that sound like... Oh, so, I... like, I'm not excited about a Kia Optima, but I guarantee you there's going to be a kid in 50 <laughs> oh, years yeah. who's going to yeah. be like, that he's, was my Yeah, he's going to be like, I remember where that car, it got stolen out of our driveway. Exactly. <laughs> but only in the United States, not in Canada. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. The Kia Optima was non-stealable, except in the United States, because the re- regulations were more lax. So we're going to design it differently to make it stealable, because money? I well, still think the, that it's hilarious car. that their answer to the problem was, we're going to send the club. Club to everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the, uh, but that's like the, the Mitsubishi Mirage. It didn't have a steering wheel lock. It still doesn't. Well, if all these Kias were made in <laughs> manual transmission, then they wouldn't have been stolen either. Exactly. It's the current millennial anti-theft device. That's right. But, you know, not short of getting back on track, I think everybody's going to remember certain things nostalgic. Like we we, we had a bunch of Windows XP machines in the the con last weekend. And, you know, I remember when XP came out. But a lot of the kids today are like, oh, that was my first computer when I was three. I'm like, okay, old man, Ryan's just going to go over here and die. But (laughs) cool. (laughs) All right. Old man, but, old man screams, uh, yells at cloud. Yells at cloud. But, uh, you know, so I, I think those, like the Dell laptops I had set up with Windows XP, those will be collectible to somebody. It might not be me. Yeah. It might not be Frank. It might not be I Joe. I'm looking for Packard Bell. All right. That's the, that's the same thing now. With, uh, that's the same thing now with the cell phones. They're bringing back flip phones. Yeah. There's something satisfying about hanging up on someone. You just go. Yeah. Yeah. All right. You can't do that with a touch. You're like, ah, angry. And then half the time you're still waiting on the stupid thing. Yeah, you're like, it's not disconnecting. The the, the people who make, <laughs> here we go here who yeah, make we should have, on these things we should have we should have expected that. Huh? Yeah, Mac Mini Solar. <laughs> the people that make the the like this one the <laughs> the people that make the UI on the iPhone are the same ones that do the stream yard. You hit stop stream and then twenty Wait, seconds, ten seconds. Right yeah. the button, it. Well, apparently this is the thing. Did you guys know about the millennial pause? Do you do you do you know I've this? I've never heard of that. So. I didn't either until a couple of weeks ago, Linus t- talked about it. But apparently, kids today who are on the Snapchat and on the on the TikToks, mm-hmm. um, they just start, they just talk and then hit record. So they're they're in conversation while they're, so you miss the first little bit. Apparently, millennials and everybody, because we're, you know, half sensible, we wait until the recording starts and then we start to talk. But apparently, it's called a millennial pause and the kids make fun of us today for it. Interesting. They make fun of us for being able to communicate. Exactly. As opposed to being already in the middle of a tirade. Well, when we, when the stream goes live, they, they make fun of us because we wait the 30, you know, the three seconds or whatever it is before we go. Hi guys. Welcome to the stream. You know? (laughs) Yeah. I, I, I I say the same, Joe. (laughs) My next stream, I'm just going to be like, and that's the stream for tonight. See ya. And then immediately (laughs) close it. But yeah, apparently it's a thing, I, and I think it's really funny. <laughs> well, I think I'm going to call it a stream for tonight. We've been doing for 2.45. I don't have anything else to, to go on with, and it's time for me to go sleepy by because I have oh. to get up early tomorrow because I've got I've got to finish oh, all these guzzies and get them shipped out. I've got 20 orders to get shipped out. So. Awesome. So thank you all for stopping by. Uh, do you all want to tell everybody how you can be found on the internet? <laughs> Well, you go, go, Javier. Just point. Here, have point. master big band dot social, <laughs> have master in uh, the Twitter crap, and adventuresinretro.com will take you to my uh, YouTube channel. Oh, yeah. Cool. Nice. I like that. Ryan. <laughs> yep, you. No, not, no, no. The other one? Yes. Ryan? Okay. Uh, you, you can find me on. Uh... Bitbang.social and on YouTube, and uh, eventually this this other one over here is going to go because the month is almost over. But uh, yes. hopefully, you know, I'm a small ap- April to um, 
Francois. Video? Probably not. Where are the Francois hats? Francois wants the hat so he can have oh, the hat. Hold on. Okay, that's fine. Oh. <laughs> we all have to get the hats. Goodness. Oh, God. Where are the hats? <laughs> because this is going to be our retro repair roundup because we don't have one tomorrow. <laughs> because we because it's the third Sunday. Oh, we don't have one tomorrow? No, we don't. That's third Sunday. Oh, okay. Third Sunday. <laughs> We're only first and third, remember? Okay, but good. So that's, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeehaw! April's one of those weird months. Um, potatoes. And then um, Frodo. Uh, you can find me on YouTube at Frodo Jedi or bitbang.social at Frodo Jedi as well or Old World Tech Fridays. Oh, yes. I forgot Old World Tech Fridays. The new, yep. the new, the the new, new, the new cool channel. thing that yes. you can find, find when he doesn't have a toothache. That's right. Yes. yes. And I don't have a 24-hour flu. Yes. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> that time of year. So, yes. So, so, basically, this is kind of our your makeup for the... Why didn't Trina show up? She was invited. She's asleep. I'm asleep. She's asleep. She's asleep. Oh, yeah. I want that. That's fine. Anyway, That's okay. um, again, my name is Joe Stroh Snyder of Joe's Computer Museum. I run a museum here in lovely central Ohio. You can support me and my museum operations by going to jcm-one.com and picking up some cool things like blue scuzzies or hats or mugs or t-shirts or any of that other cool stuff. You can also support me by going to uh, Patreon right down here at Joe's Computer Museum and it's for as little a dollar a month. You get to uh, like hang out with me on the Discord and know what we're doing. And for more amounts per month, you get mugs and t-shirts and cool stuff. So that is super cool. You can follow me on the internet at Museum Joe at oldbytes.space. I'm on a different Mastodon from everybody else because I signed up for it before Sean's bitbing.social existed, but that's what it is. You can also find me on the uh, the, the the garbage fire that is uh, Twitter. Uh, at Museum Joe. Uh, before you leave, if you liked our stream tonight, please hit the like button. And if you're not a subscriber, please hit the subscribe. Um, if you hated the stream, hit the hate dislike button. I don't care. Just hit the buttons and make them blinky. Because then that tells YouTube that, hey, something's going on with this channel. It's a mover and it's a shaker. And it helps bring more people to the stuff a doodles. And that is awesome. So again, thank you all to... Uh, all you guys here on the stream who hang out, hang out with me today while I drew, drew stupid, boring stuff on the screen. And to all of you awesome people in the chat who hung out with us while I drew boring stuff on the screen, these other guys did really cool conversation in the background. Uh, thanks again, and have a good evening. Bye, everybody!